Good morning, folks, and welcome to another edition of the Roger Report Live, the best show on social media. If you are new to the channel, go ahead and take the time out to hit that like button because this is where you're going to find the best content on social media. And you don't have to worry about it because you're going to have me right here to make sure that that happens. And if you've already been coming to the channel for a while, go ahead and hit the like button because you already know what time it is. And you know this is where you're going to get the best content on social media. It's not a mystery to you at this point. You've seen other people do it. You've seen other people do it well. But what you haven't seen is anyone do it quite the way I do it. So make sure you hit that like button, folks. And everyone, take the time out to share the content, y'all. Share the content out, okay? There are so many people who need to get great content like this. And it's a small thing you can do to help the world be a better place. And isn't that what we all want at the end of the day? Don't we want the world to be a better place? Of course we do. Of course we do. So share the content out, y'all. Share the content out, y'all. All right? Uh, share it through your social media. Share it through word of mouth. Or even text someone's phone. But do what you got to do to help spread the word. All right, folks. Today we're going to talk a little bit about how white lives matter to black women. Okay? We're going to talk a little bit about how white lives matter to black women. And this is something that black women need to see that's going on within themselves. And they need to see that men see this. You know, whether they verbalize it or not, this is what we see. Now, some men may not know how quite to express it. They don't think about how black women can participate in white supremacy, because when you think about white supremacy, you normally think about people with white skin. But white supremacy is simply an ideology that anyone can participate in. All you have to do is believe in the ideology. OK, but before we go too far with this. First of all, let me give a, a special shout out to Trail Bentley. What's going on, Trail Bentley? Glad to see you, brother. He is the sponsor of today's stream. Shout out to Trail Bentley, who's the sponsor of today's stream. And yes, everyone who supports the channel, I do appreciate each and every one of y'all. You guys are helping me get to where I want to be. And I'm trying to, I'm going to help get the black community where it needs to be. So I appreciate everyone who takes the time out to give financial support to the channel. Y'all are the heroes of the channel. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Cause, and you do help me justify doing this on a regular basis. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, I would do it anyway, but I do appreciate the fact that you're helping me justify doing this on a regular basis because this type of blackmail media needs to be out there and you guys are helping me put it out there, okay? So definitely appreciate you. Definitely appreciate you. And let me give a few shout outs to some of the first people in the building today. So shout out to the first one in the building, my main man, A.L. Evans, first one in with the most important phrase in all of social media. Long live the visual last steppers. Yay, yay. What's happening, my brother? What's happening? Glad to see you here. Glad to see you here. Hello to the darling of the channel, Toya The. Okay. Great to see you, sister. Great to see you. And matter of fact, let me take the time out right now, y'all. Let me take the time out right now. And say that because there's always new men and always new women joining the channel. Guys, if you happen to see a woman in the live chats, if you participate on the live chat chats, and you see a woman starting to get a little bit out of pocket, don't just go right in on the lady. Just let her know we don't do that over here. We don't do that over here. You know, we can talk to each other in a respectful manner. Okay. And just let her know not to be disrespectful. And if we see that a woman cannot be respectful after being asked, I would like all the guys in the chat that saw it to simply ignore her for the rest of the day. We have to train black women that if you are disrespectful to black men, you will get less attention. Okay? Because a lot of them do it for attention. And some guys may not realize it, but a lot of them do do it for attention. So we're going to starve them of the very thing they, they want. Okay? So if you see them acting out of pocket, just ignore them for, for, the, uh, for the rest of the day. Because I, I don't want the women blocked because they need to get this content. And if you block them, they ain't going to come back. So let them, let them listen, y'all. Let them listen. All right? Shout out to my main man, Trail Bentley, the sponsor of today's stream. Glad to see you in the building. My brother, glad to see you in the building. Shout out to Mr. Suge to you in the house. What's going on? 
Shout out to Ghost Rider 870 in the building as well. What's up? I'm listening. Glad to see you here. Shout out to GT Entertainment in the building as well. We got Jamil Sword in the, in the in the building as well. Glad to see you here. Glad to see you here. And <laughs> uh, thank you for the super chat <laughs> from Mr. Suge to you. He's giving a shout out to the sponsor of today's stream. So he says, Trail Bentley. <laughs> Hey, brother, appreciate that, appreciate that, and, uh, and you know, my highest regards to Trail Bentley, because, hey, that brother's helped me along, and uh, he helping us all get to where we want to go at the end of the day. He helping us all get there, so definitely appreciate that, brother. All right, shout out to Compassion and Cows, glad to see you here in the building as well. Shout out to Most Highs Armory, hello, sir, how you doing, how you doing? Shout out to Marvel 318 in the building, and we got Rose Master 1 in the building as well. My main man, Alan Stranger, is in the building. Also glad to see y'all here. Glad to see y'all here. Uh, wait, did I say Marvel 318? I believe I did, but shout out to Marvel 318 just to make sure. Glad to see y'all in the building. And um, I appreciate y'all for joining me here because I do believe this is important work. Okay? Now, why am I doing this? So I can make stuff easier for black women to see what we see. Okay? Now, a lot of black men do not articulate that black women participate in white supremacy using those terms. Again, we don't really think about it because they're black women. We don't associate black people with white supremacy. OK, we don't associate black people being white supremacy. All right. Shout out to Jamil Sword again. Um, now, why is this important? Because if you're a normal, regular, everyday American, you've been trained to be a white supremacist. And, and I know some people don't may not really have thought about that or may feel like, hey, hey, that, that ain't me. Then nobody teach me to be a white supremacist. No, if you went to if you went to a regular old, everyday public school where the government controlled the curriculum. No, you was taught to be a white supremacist. You absolutely was. Because white supremacy runs the school system. Point blank, period. Okay? They determine what the lesson plans are going to be. They determine what books are, are, are you're able to read out of. You know, they determine a lot of different things. Now, a teacher may be able to say certain specifics, but whatever specific they do has to absolutely has to fit into what their dynamic is. If you bring in content that they're not okay with, they can just simply be in that particular content. You're going to have to stay in certain parameters. So if you went to just a normal school, guess what? You've been taught to be a white supremacist. All right? <clears throat> okay. Now, white supremacy also has been, uh, is also, has also controlled mainstream media. You're going to get white supremacist messages when you listen to things in mainstream media. That's television programming. That is movies that come out. <clears throat> okay. That is even the books that are published, the books that were published, especially in the time when we're doing um, a hardcover and paperback books. I know now we're going toward electronic. You'll have more stuff coming out with just electronic versions. But if you read books, there's a lot of white supremacy in books that are released. Now, if you read magazines, there's a lot of white supremacy involved in magazine articles as well. So if you grew up in America as a normal person, you were trained to be a white supremacist. There was subconscious messaging being pushed to you since the day you were born. Yes, even if you go to the daycare. If you go to a daycare, you go to preschool, Who's running daycares and preschools? Okay. If you are a normal American, usually white supremacists are running those. Okay. All right. Why? Because it, everybody been taught to be a white supremacist. If you're a normal, regular, everyday person in America, if you're one of us, we all got taught to be white supremacists. Now, the question is, when do you let it go? Now, I understand that the system is designed to produce white supremacy. Okay, I'm, that's what the system is designed for at the end of the day. So, you know, it's not a mystery to me. It is what it's designed to produce. Now, the thing is, when you become an adult, 
it's on you. You can't keep blaming the system forever. All right. You can't keep blaming your parents forever. You can't keep blaming society forever. Now, at some point in time, it becomes on you. All right. Yes, I do. I do accept the environment can have influence on people. You know, I accept that, uh, you know, uh, you can be influenced by things you saw on television. You can be influenced by political figures. You can be influenced by a whole lot of stuff. But once you become an adult, it's on you who you allow to influence you. Because when somebody says something you don't like, you don't let them influence you. You know, that, that's what happens a lot of the time. Now, even some, some of those times, they may influence you anyway, because when people hit you with the truth, it's hard to ignore, even if you didn't like it. But there's plenty of people that you heard over time. If you didn't like what they say, you just ignore what they said, and you didn't allow them to influence you. It is what it is. That's the way it goes. Now, a lot of black men will start to shake off the white supremacy. Why? Only because white supremacy is directed at black men. And a lot of black women never shake off white supremacy because it's not directed toward them. Point blank, period. Okay? And, and I know a lot of you new folks may say, hey, what you mean white supremacy is not directed toward black women? We had a whole discussion of that. Whole discussion on does white supremacy affect black women? No, we really don't. Okay? You can go back and check that discussion out as well. Uh, but it don't it don't affect black women. You know, it's not. You no, know, I'm gonna, not gonna say it doesn't affect black women because it affects everybody. Okay, white supremacy affects everybody who lives in America, but it's not directed toward anyone but black men, and that's a key difference. It's not directed toward anyone but black men. Okay, other people may get caught up. You know, you know, you know, uh, casualties of war. <laughs> You know, the war on black men, somebody else may be a casualty of it, you know, but at the end of the day, it's directed toward black men. It's always been that way in America. And how can I say it's always been that way? Because it was that way before America was the America we know it to be today. Now, shout out to all my people who listen from around the world. I definitely appreciate the love and support you guys give me. Also, I appreciate y'all viewing the content. You know, definitely appreciate it. Definitely appreciate it. So thank you very much. All right. But uh, I just speak from an American context because I do know America. You know, I, I, you know I, I'm, not, I'm never going to claim to be an expert in anybody else's country because I don't plan to go start living in somebody else's country. But I know America. And I do know a lot of things follow uh, what America does as far as mainstream media goes. But, you know, sometimes we have guests here that speak and they live in these other places. I allow those brothers to speak for the, for those places, or even if sisters come from a different country, I allow those people to speak about what's going on in those particular countries because hey, they they got they they credible, okay, <laughs> more credible than me because I don't spend time over there. All right, so shout out to Wizard Kelly, thank you very much for the super chat, my friend. Thank you very much for the super chat. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, Wizard Kelly says, thank you for the consistent and entertaining and thought-provoking content. Best wishes for the platform in the year. Uh, <laughs> thanks to the chat and panelists, too. Uh, well, he said best wishes for the platform in the new year. Okay, and uh, thanks to chat and panelists, too. And Wizard Kelly, I appreciate that a great deal, my brother. I appreciate that a great deal. And I do appreciate everybody rocking with me. On this particular channel, you know, I, you know, y'all know I lost some some uh, channels in the past, you know, and I'm about to hit my anniversary on this particular channel, my one year anniversary for this particular one. So, you know, I'm very happy with with uh, what's been going on, and I definitely appreciate everybody who comes in to join the panel, whether you with me or against me. Cause see, hey, over here, I'm not afraid to answer the tough questions, and I'm not afraid to have the conversations that people need to have, you know, and and people gonna get stuff out. I ain't afraid to deal with it. So I definitely appreciate everybody who has participated, whether you participate a lot or participated little. I definitely appreciate it, all of you at the end of the day. And I do believe that these type of discussions we need to, we need to really think about and listen to as black Americans. And that's why I do encourage y'all to pass this content around. Y'all know there's a lot of people who need this stuff. And they may not agree with me, but they need to hear it at the end of the day. They do need to hear it. Okay? And I also want to give a shout out to... Uh, 
to Oliver the Gray. I appreciate you very much, my brother. Thank you to Oliver the Gray. Oliver the Gray actually sent me some Friday that for whatever reason it wasn't showing up. Okay. Um, but I but I'm not with my uh new computer, so <laughs> yeah, I just been having issues with Cash App, y'all. I've been having issues with Cash App. I'm getting them, but they, they're not showing up the way I need them to show up so I can see them on the air. But I definitely appreciate the Cash Apps because I don't have to wait on Cash Apps. The other stuff I do have to wait for. <laughs> I definitely appreciate it, but I don't have to wait on Cash App. So, you know, Cash Apps are always good to go. I appreciate it. So shout out to Oliver the Gray. He said, keep it going, brother. And I most assuredly will. I most assuredly will. Thank you very much, my brother. Definitely appreciate you. Definitely appreciate you. All right. Now, uh, matter of fact, let me let me just double check something real quick. Um, I believe I believe I'm on point though. I'm just trying to make sure this was all right, folks. All right, now, yes, there we go. There we go. All right, now, folks. I now, of course I dropped. A couple links in the description on this particular show, and if you're listening to the past content, y'all, and if you haven't heard it, definitely go check out the the, the other content on the channel that you that's already put up before you had a chance to hear it. But always check for a link. Always check for a link because you know it's links out here here and there. It's links out here, so always check for a link. I put two links in today's description showing how white lives matter to black women. Now. This is the thing, and it's something that women need to recognize that men can see whether they articulate it the way I'm articulating it right now or not. Black women have this thing where white lives matter to them. Okay? Now, if you just look at it as a surface content, should white lives matter? I mean, there's nothing really wrong with saying white lives matter. I know uh, using the term "white lives matter" right now is a little suspect because uh um because there was an organization that used the term "black lives matter" that was headed up by some lesbian women, and they miss they misappropriate all types of millions of dollars. Okay, they misappropriate all types of millions of dollars, but this is the thing. People should have checked on it. Okay, I told y'all, even myself personally, I went to go uh, give them a donation. I had a little time on my hands. I sat down at the computer. I looked it up, said, hey, what's this about? Went on their website, and their website told me that they were on a white supremacist agenda. Now, how can I say that they were on a white supremacist agenda? Because the website told me the Black, the Black Lives Matter organization, okay? Uh, this is an organization that got a lot of hype you know, o- over uh, the death of black men who they did not serve, okay? Mm-hmm. They didn't do much to serve over these black men's death. But they said Black Lives Matter was for black women, okay? It was looking to benefit black women. It was looking to benefit black children and it was looking to benefit uh black men or women or trans people you know as long as you were part of the lgbt community okay again who were they looking to benefit they were looking to benefit black women straight black women let me make that clarification they were looking to benefit straight black women black children Okay, so that's all the minors, 17 and down, as long as you're black. And then it was looking to benefit black adult male and females if you were part of the LGBT community. So if you were a straight black man, that organization was never designed to benefit you. And they did definitely prove their point because who did they really help when it comes to straight black men? You know, people say, well, you know, they didn't they didn't do nothing for uh for you know for the for the families of Michael Brown. Well Michael Brown was a straight black man. Okay. Matter of fact, I don't know, I, I have to think about it. I'm not I'm not even sure. 
Now, I believe he was over 18 when they killed him. I do believe it was he was over 18 when he got killed. You know, I'm trying to think, was he even a minor, which should have been, you know, um, should have been a reason to actually do something for real. But according to the information I've heard, that uh, they only sent the man $500. Well, they only sent, they gave Mike Brown's father $500 for the, for the funeral. That's a rumor that I've heard. I'm going to say it like that because like, I never legitimized it. So that's a rumor that I heard that they only gave $500 to Mike Brown's family f- for a funeral. So they collected millions of dollars. Okay. And one of the main guys that, that they were using the uh, experience of his bad experience in his life, they gave his family $500 to bury him. That's sad if you ask me. That's sad if you ask me. And shout out to Trail Billy for the super sticker. I definitely appreciate you, brother. Got something from the sponsor of today's stream. Appreciate that, brother. Appreciate that. Okay. Now, you know, with what they were doing, okay, or even doing to this day, because a lot of their money is in question right now. We got to start looking at what does the Black Lives Matter organization really represent. Well, BLM, okay, is using the blood, lives, and memories of straight black men to advance the lives of anyone other than straight black men. See, because of how this organization moves, see, now we define the term, okay? BLM, that we define the term based on what we saw, because this really was Mr. Z, okay? <laughs> I chipped in a little bit, but this really was Mr. Z. What is BLM? Okay? It's using the blood, lives, and memories of straight black men to advance the lives of anyone other than straight black men. Now, even though I know a lot of people meant well, and they never really checked the details of that organization, they just started supporting because it sounded good. You know? I, I, I mean, hey, all of us, I'm sure, have done something and supported something because it sounded good without really checking into it, okay? But this is the nature of the beast when you live here in America. Now, why did I drop the two links in the description? Well, I dropped those two particular links because you have a black woman saving the older white gentleman, okay? White gentleman was in a situation, has the intelligence or the mindset of an 11-year-old, so not the best to be out in the winter storm, okay? And you also have the woman who put who was willing to put her life on the line because she saw a dude with white skin, okay? Now, I know we a lot of times we say white, but when we say white, it, it really is it's really a term that I'm using to be inclusive of any non-black man. Because, see, as long as you got that skin that they want, they cool with you at the end of the day, okay? They cool with you at the end of the day. Black women want that skin tone. They want to be white women. And they show it in all kinds of ways. Now, a lot of them do want babies by non-black men. And shout out to BGS for bringing the information to the light that we had over 1.2 million babies that were born to non-black men. And you know what? I'm pretty sure those babies are put off on black men because you never really hear about these uh, ladies who've had all these children by these men that are not black. And let's keep it real, y'all. If you've been watching my channel for any period of time, you should know at this point, women out here lying about uh, the uh, the paternity of, of their children. They lying about the paternity of their children. So when you start looking at the fact that they're lying about the paternity of their children, when you also look at the fact that they value that lighter skin, you know, you got a, you got a serious combination you got to think about it at the end of the day. And see, brothers need to understand this and sisters need to understand this because when you put all this together, it turns to a lot of bad situations for black men. And why would black men support black women who are on a mission to destroy them at the end of the day? That don't even make sense. They want us to help them destroy us. They do want us to help them destroy us, but it doesn't, doesn't make sense for black men to help black women destroy black men. 
you know. So that's why I, I feel bad for any brother who ain't figured out that the culture of America is anti-black men. I feel bad for the brothers who ain't figured it out yet. But we all got to get to that point where we figure it out for ourselves. And hopefully you get to live before you figure it out. Because a lot of us, we don't figure it out until we did. It's unfortunate. But, you know, when you got all these children being raised by single moms, a lot of them don't get the messages and they did before they figure out what's going on. It's, a, it's sad, but it is a reality. But look at how much effort black women make when you start when they start being able to have an impact to a non-black man. Y'all know how black women treat us. But look how they act when they can save a non-black man. This should be something for y'all to think about. But A.B., I'm going to give you the mic, my brother. How you doing? Hey, what's going on, <clears throat> Roger? Um, saw one of the videos. I, I missed the other video, but uh, I, I saw the one with the... Uh, with the uh, lady um, stopping the shooter, allegedly, I guess, or whatever. Um, it is what it is. Some black women love white men. Uh, what, what's that David Carroll said? Uh, 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 his white skin uh, erases a bunch of his iniquities or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's it's well, such that effect. My favorite, from him, <laughs> my favorite quote from him is is they just want to touch the hem of his garment. They this would they just want to touch the hem of the white man's garment. And when I fell out, I fell out. But um it is what it is. And at this point, if they operate like that, leave them to themselves. Okay, how pretty they are, leave, leave them to themselves. If they want to operate like that, they wanna the so-called divest, leave them to themselves. Well, the thing, the great thing about a divester is that they are actually a little bit more open and honest, which I can appreciate that because they don't like me and they willing to tell me they don't like me. So I don't have no issue with the with the divestors as far as uh, alongside of those terms in that context. I have no issue with divestors, but the thing is, most black men don't even know that black women are white supremacists. Now, keep in mind. That woman that you saw, who wait a minute, wait a minute, which one did you see? You, you said you saw which video? Which video did you see? The one, the one with the school shooting. Okay, okay, the one with the school shoot. Yeah, the other one definitely. Uh, yeah, you can tell she's <laughs> out school when school you get a moment and, and check out that second one as well. But I, I'm gonna say this for the for the school shooting, everything looks great. It looks great on the outside because what you see is. A woman trying to help at a, in a school shooting situation, so it looks right. good. You know, you, you you can't you can't really throw stones at a lady for uh, wanting to save herself and, and and other people involved in the school shooting. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume because I don't know the information on the on the guy. I'm gonna assume that this was a minor as well. I'm gonna assume that this was a minor. Okay. She a teacher. I'm sure this. I'm guessing this has to be a student who went to the school. Okay. Yeah. Now, you know, there's a chance that it could be. It could have been the senior, and they still could have been 17 years old. Okay. There's a chance of that happening. So it wasn't. A, it wasn't even a, a man. But that woman said she was willing to go out there with the school shooter just to make sure he don't get shot. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, honestly, when, when I when I heard her say that, I was like, man, I'll be right there. I'll be right there. When is the last time that you could get the sentiment from a random black woman who was willing to go out there <laughs> with a guy and take a bullet for him? And, and you know, I mean, even if he ain't doing nothing wrong, when does she want to take a bullet for? Him? I don't really see that. I don't really see that. Never. But the fact that he's <laughs> he's orchestrating a school shooting, and she stills like, "Hey, hey, don't worry about. It. I'm gonna make sure you live. Out of all people, I'm gonna make sure you live. I'll go out there with you just so they don't fire on." You. I ain't never heard a black woman say that when it, when it, in terms of a black man. Okay, I just ain't never heard it. Period. You know, I can't even remember the heard what time I heard it when it came to a black child. You know, you know I hate this, a lot I hate of moms won't even. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. 
I hate to say this, but it goes back to uh, what's that Malcolm I said? The difference between a field Negro and a house Negro. House Negro will be like, you sick, boss? We sick, boss. That's what that goes back to, unfortunately. <laughs> And, 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 and shout out to Jamil Sword in in the uh, chat. Uh, uh, he's uh, giving us the correct thing that David Carroll said. He said his his white skin covers a multitude of imperfections. And yeah. man, I, you know what? The man yeah, was sure. correct. The man was absolutely correct. So rest in peace to that brother. You know, um, yeah, it, it, and it's gonna do that now. <sighs> That's this, the thing is, this is a sentiment, y'all. I'm talking about a sentiment that black women have. I can't blame her for trying to save a school, you know what I'm saying, or children at a school shoot. I can't blame her for that. But the thing is, you know, not only did she want to save herself and the children, she wanted to save the shooter. You know, and I mean, it's cool, you know, if, if you just look at it on the surface, just like the Black Lives Matter organization was cool when you look at it on the surface. Mm -hmm. But when you start digging a little deeper than beyond the surface, you, you you know, we don't see black women stepping out there trying to save black men, even when black men are having done wrong to things done wrong to them. I, I would applaud a woman who does step out there for a black man because we don't really see it, you know, and Yo, I don't even know if she knew who this student was. And the way she talked about him, I don't think she knew this particular guy. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it was a student who didn't go to her particular class if it was a student at the school. But she never gave a sense that she knew the guy. Okay? I, I didn't get that sense um, when, I, when I saw that clip. Um, I did watch a longer video on the same thing. And, and there is a link that will show you like a full video. Um... Now I was being I was somewhat distracted, but I ran out of time because y'all, you know, the show got to start. So I ran out of time. But I didn't really get the sense that she knew who that particular student was, if he was a student at that particular school. Mm -hmm. But a woman saying, I'm willing to go out there with you just so they won't fire on you. Man, you you doing a whole lot for this white guy. And and what what do we have going across the country right now when it comes to black boys? Black boys can't even read. Nowhere near where they're supposed to be able to read. But a but a shooter comes into a school, and a random black woman cares so much that she's willing to go out there just to make sure that boy don't die. We can't get black women to teach our, their own sons to read, not somebody else's son. We can't get them to teach their own sons to read, but let that guy show up with the right skin color. Hey, you know what? You 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 go ahead and do, you know what I'm saying, and I'm gonna make sure you get out of this alive. Now, um, Kanata. Oh, you know what? I think I think it's cool. I think it's cool. We're gonna bring we're gonna bring you to the stream. All right, but J Do, I'm gonna let you have the mic, and then we'll have Kanata after you. So, matter of fact, J Do, if you don't mind, let me let me let Kanata in here first, just because this is the first time up. Welcome to the show, Kanata. Roger, it's actually me. Uh, Termo Cat, this is my alter ego. It's actually Kaneda. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, how you doing? Kaneda. Yeah. <laughs> how you doing, brother? Yes. I'm doing well. All right. Yeah, I'll let, well, let well, Jado go, go ahead. ahead and I'll, I'll come in afterwards. Okay. Okay. But Jada, go ahead, brother. Hey, what's up, Roger? Uh, Happy New Year to you. Uh, Termo Cat as well. Uh, the brother AB, I think he just dropped off. Uh, thanks for having me up, bro. Um, yeah, uh, on the road right now, so I'll just drop my two cents, man. Very two two interesting um, links that you dropped um, up there. Uh, what I found interesting, and again, I don't know if uh, you, any of you um, gentlemen discussed it already, but uh, the the first first video, particularly, um, they're giving this woman all the credit. And then um, towards the end of the video, they mentioned that this lady had, I guess, uh, supposedly heard this man, this old white man outside crying and whining. And she told her fiance, Trent, I remember the name, Trent. And they went outside and Trent 
was the person that uh, picked this uh, old old guy up and carried him inside the apartment. And why isn't he featured as the the good Samaritan, the hero, so to speak? You know what I mean? And um, and, and I wonder if he's even even her uh, fiance. You know, he might be her fiance. Maybe they're just trying to make it sound certain ways on television. You know what I mean? Could just be you know, the dude that she was with or whatever. So I wonder if he's actually made a commitment to marry this um, woman. And also I found it interesting that they said that her kids, her three kids were with um, stranded with family members of hers instead of being in the house with her. And uh, I know recently we were talking about do uh, single mothers deserve a day off. And, um, and I, I commented that they frequently, they pawn their, uh, their children off to family members and other single mothers and grandmothers, grandparents, wh whoever would take them so they can have their quote unquote day off, you know? So I found those two things interesting uh, with that video. And also, man, she didn't, the woman in the first video didn't really display any class. Like, okay, so allegedly she's a, a hero. She's this, you know, good, uh, great, good Samaritan or whatever. And then she was like, um, yeah, I called 911 and y'all better come get this man and blah, blah, blah. It was kind of just real sassy and like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, y'all, he ain't going to die over here. You know what I mean? Like, why don't you, I mean, you did the, the best you could. Why do you have to, I don't know, they always have to put some sass into it and some type of, yeah. And it's just, it's just typical, you know what I mean? So, and, um. And with the second video, second link that you posted, uh, I just found it interesting that it really had nothing to do with the story. But they had she had the shit on. She she had to say something negative, talking about her her ex husband left her. You know what I mean? He divorced her and left her, kind of like you know he abandoned her. And I and when we take their you know their word at face value, it's like I wonder what's underneath that story. You know what I mean? So. And it had nothing to do with the story just to make her a victim and probably some quote unquote, some, some black man probably was some type of a, you know, I guess just some uh, villainous person, just some type of villain in the story. And it had nothing to do with the story. And um, also what I, I, I noticed as well, when she said her, she had a child, I don't know if she said son, but a child that was multiple disabled. That's what she said. And uh, Roger, you were just talking about teaching um, sons to read. I wonder if that child, if it's a son or not, you know, it's questionable. We don't, I don't know. I, I don't quite recall if it's a son or not, but I wonder if that per that uh, child is even really disabled in the, in the, I guess, the traditional sense of the word um, disabled. And it's, you know, maybe it's just another child that's, that hasn't been um, taught how to read and the mother isn't, you know, showing any type of interest in the, uh, the education of the child. And then the child is labeled uh, ADHD or something like that. So or something like you know, something like that. And it's not really disabled. So it's just a lot of, um, you know, anytime that they can um, put some type of negative um, claim against a black man, even when it has nothing to do with the story, you know, they they, they throw it in there. And um, of course, these uh, that woman was, yeah, she was willing to put her life on the line to save a, a, a white person, you know what I'm saying? A, a criminal, a, a, a murderous, a, a, a criminal white person, you know what I mean? And it's, it's just amazing. And I, and I wonder if that would be, uh, would that be afforded to a, a black uh, male or a black, black man or anybody, anybody like that. So I'll leave it at that. And I appreciate you having me up, Roz. Hey man, I appreciate you being here and you brought out some great points right there because supposedly her her ex husband, who had nothing to do with the story, well, she did take a moment to try to make him look bad. Said he left her. Now my thing is, he may have left her because he got some sense. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> he may have seen the same thing I'm seeing. And uh, but that's neither here nor there. But she did have a child who she claims is disabled. Yes, she's willing to put her life on the line for this white guy. Who I'm assuming is a kid, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm assuming, you know, maybe it's a senior in high school or whatever, who knows? So I'm assuming this is a kid too. But I'm willing to take a bullet and and you know what I'm saying, and die over this white kid, even though I got a kid at home. Now you just said your husband ain't there. 
So I got a kid at home who depends on me. Supposedly, the way you uh, you know, put it out there that he's disabled, you know, but she didn't say what it was. So yeah, Jado, you actually make up a great a great point because yo, know, the way people say stuff does make a difference. You never really know what they're talking about for sure. But when people say stuff a certain way, so you can get a, a false narrative running. That's just what it is at the end of the day. Now, um, you know, I'm finna turn it over to K Nada, but let me say this right quick. Uh, it's actually I got it's some trouble backstage. Oh, I'm, what, what's that? It's Kaneda. Kaneda. Okay, yeah. Kaneda. Okay, okay. Okay, well, just like it's spelled. <laughs> I don't know why I'm messing it up. It's just like it's spelled. Uh, but let me say this real quick. I got um, I got what I'm sure is three trolls backstage right now. All right, y'all. It's a it's a brand new year. I didn't say it, but happy new years to everybody. Okay. But even the trolls, y'all, it's a new year. We we gonna do things a new way. I understand a lot of trolls want to come join my broadcast, and that's absolutely fine if y'all want to join my broadcast. But I don't know y'all, it's gonna cost. So the troll who's using the name uh the one who's using the name John, okay? Uh, it's $50 for you to join, okay? And I'll bring you up to the broadcast. It's not a problem, but it's going to be $50 for you, okay? The one who's using the name Mac, okay? For you, uh, Mac, we're going we gonna to make you a 75. Send a $50, John, and, and uh, Mac, you send $75 to my cash app or my super chat, and I'll let y'all join the broadcast, okay? And 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 uh, yo, we'll do it like that. And for Ken, Ken, hmm, yeah, I don't know you, Ken. I don't know you. I was trying to see if you might have been somebody I know, but no, I don't. I don't know you either. So Ken, I, you know what? I got a better feeling about you, Ken. I got a better feeling about you. Just send me uh, <laughs> just send me forty dollars, Ken. Ken, you send me four dollars on either the Cash App or chat, and we'll let you join. And and yeah, if you're unfamiliar to me, y'all, it's gonna cost you at the end of the day. It's gonna cost you. So that's what the prices are. And matter of fact, everybody add fifty seven cent to, to to the price I gave you. Add fifty seven cent because Trail Bentley say so. Just that simple at the end of the day. So yeah, y'all want to come on? Hey, it is what it is. Pay the fee. If you want to mess up my channel and cause me problems, hey, pay your way. All right, and, and uh, Mac and John, the fact that y'all was even using black folks, you know what? <laughs> that that's uh, I mean, y'all was using white folks, so you know, in this type of particular, you know, looking at the title, you should have known better at the end of the day. And we got uh, a new troll who's coming up as a fe who's trying to come up as a female. All right, and this is a new troll, at least another account. Maybe it's the same person because somebody dropped off and you got another account, and they're using the name Gabriella. Gabriella, $274.57. Okay, Gabriella, and make sure you're hearing me. $274.57. And I'm serious. So send that to my cash app or my super chat, or don't even worry about getting on the show. All right, go ahead, Kenada. How you doing? Yeah, Roger. Actually, um, I like the way your your stance has changed regarding bringing these women up here because it's true. Make them pay to basically get the platform. But yes, back to the original um story, uh, the original um broadcast. I um for both of the links, I watched them. I want to make an overall point about both the links. The overall point I wanted to say is that the the television representation of of these black women, in my in my opinion, is intended to confirm to the greater white society, speaking to your point of teaching white supremacy as a, as a wholesale um, approach towards American um, upbringing, is to, uh, is to um, essentially confirm to them, hey, look, our programming is working. You see here, we have these people that are being oppressed by us and saying in real time, essentially, and, and here we are, even as we are oppressing them, they still prioritize us more than they prioritize themselves and even their own, I'm saying, members of their own um, race, if you want to call it that, or their own tribe. So you can see this is this is us giving you evidence that our programming is working. That's regarding both the scenarios. Now regarding the school shooter, this woman that is going back to the whole point of the, um, the the myth of white womanhood. When she says, "I will walk out there so they won't shoot you," and I'm sitting to my I'm saying to myself like, 
let me get this straight. You think as a black woman, you can protect a white man from being shot? I mean, what you see, what this is what I'm talking about the psychological. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's you think you're a white woman, that's what you like. Or this is your opportunity to basically emulate, emulate some of the elements of that where you can actually pretend, oh, oh, here I am, I'm going out in front of the police and they're not going to shoot me because I'm like, like, no, no, they so that that that's the point I wanted to make about that. That is, I don't know where she got that in her head. For some reason, but she believed that essentially that was a relevant, um, like a thing to believe that she had the power to prevent him from being shot, which is beyond um, beyond my understanding. Um, regarding the, the other points about the need to protect him, that 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 speaks to the original point about the, the programming, and um, the second video with <laughs> regarding the the and yes, and going back to Jado's point about regarding the, the school shooter. Um, yes, sacrificing yourself, and you, you 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 indicated that you had a child that was multiply disabled, and yet you you you're here um, resonating with someone who basically. And by the way, speaking of that point of resonating, why, what was she talking about? We all have bad days. We all we all have troubles. I'm like I'm like lady, lady. Financial hardship and certain element is not the same thing as someone who has been given the element of superiority, seeing it dwindle in front of them and lashing out. Because that superior superiority is being dwindling. That is not the same. I'm saying that hardship is not your hardship, lady. I, I, I don't know where she got this whole idea of resonating with him. Like, oh God, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, yo, no wonder this friggin' church is empty, dude. Like, you think you think God look at that man and wants to save him? That I'm saying that's why your church is empty because you think God will save any piece of uh, but anyhow, anyhow. So um, and then the second video regarding um. Regarding the, the 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 other one, I'm like I'm like that. That's just proved to me that essentially that all the points you guys are making about SYSBM and everything is like I'm like lady, I'm like lady, really, really, a random white man's outside screaming, he needs help, and you open the open the door and bring him into your house, not knowing what it is. And I'm like I'm like you're saying, and that's also speak to her emptiness. They, they're saying you can see in her eyes the wildness, the 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 lack of psychological stability. She's just freaking unhinged. They're saying they they have they. <laughs> They did this to themselves, Roger. I see it in all the like they did it to themselves. They're they're they're, bought, they're they're psychologically broken in so many ways because they wanted to go at it alone, and in three generations later on, it is proven to be very disadvantageous to them. And nevertheless, though, I digress. Well, well you know what? Um, it's 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 a crazy thing. At the end of the day, it is crazy, and, and you know what? <laughs> Shout out to. Roses smell like boo boo. Uh, Roses smell like boo boo says, Roger, you know, that woman was not risking her life, she was not going to get shot, and she knew it. You know what? She don't know that for sure. She believes she wasn't gonna get shot, and, and I do believe that you're correct that she believed that she was not gonna get shot. That's why she's gonna go out there. But anytime you go out there and you put yourself in front of a gun. Anybody can make a mistake. Point blank, period. And I do believe more than likely, you know, she probably wouldn't have get shot because people probably would have been confused if the woman would have came out first. So the, the shooters probably would have would have been a little bit confused on why a woman came out first at the end of the day. So, you know, you're probably right. But the thing is, they won't even teach they won't teach their own sons collectively. I'm not saying about her, but uh because we don't know that's the situation with her. But collectively, she won't even teach, you know, black women don't even teach their own sons how to read. You know, and the fact that she's a teacher don't tell me that her son knows how to read. Because I told y'all from personal experience, I knew somebody who was a principal and her son was failing. The only reason the son was, was start doing well in school because they were made to do well in school by dad and stepmom. OK. That was, you know what I'm saying? They the ones that got got on got on his behind. Now you know other friends that came through, whatever. We all kind of express our disappointment in them, and and you know we we just added fuel to their fire. But I saw dad and stepmama. Yeah, dad and stepmama get this boy straight when it comes to grades. Mama, who's an actual principal in charge of multiple children at a school, didn't seem to care. Now how do I why do I say she didn't seem to care? Because Cause she let it happen and the boy was living with her. So how can she care if she's a principal and your son is failing living with you? You might be able to make an argument that sounds somewhat there 
if if she didn't have custody of the child. But no, she had custody. So, you know, uh, t- just the idea of a black woman going outside there with a shooter, yeah, and they yeah, know maybe. somebody was in there shooting. I mean, come on now, that's that's just crazy in itself. Go, go ahead and say that, say that again, Jado. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Jado, was you saying something, Jado? Okay, I'm not sure you was. I hear you now. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, brother. I was that was a mistake on my audio over here, man. My bad. Let me mute myself. Oh, okay. Okay. That's <clears throat> all right. Well, yeah, t- to to me, it just doesn't make sense that that you know, women and what well what I want y'all to understand, this is just a manifestation of white supremacy. Okay. People do things because of what they believe. That's why I say you got to also hold people accountable for what they believe, not just what they do. These are cases where people are manifesting the white supremacy. The white supremacy was already there. You know, she heard the white guy crying outside and and people would say, hey, you know what? Just offhand. Well, why wouldn't you help a, a, a old white guy like that just offhand? Well, did y'all see the level of passion she had behind uh <laughs> behind this white man? Okay. Now, I think it was Jada who brought up a very good point. She didn't even get the man in the house. She didn't even get the man in the house. Who's somebody else that got the man in the house. Who who was the person that got the man in the house? The fiance. Who else was it gonna be? Okay. Fiance gets the man in the house. But she's very impassioned about him getting some help. She's very impassioned about that. Now, now, should she be passionate about that man getting help? Hey, I guess. I guess. You know, you already let him in the crib at this particular point. And if he has a mental state of an 11-year-old, he ain't much of a threat as it is. So I don't even see what the big deal is at this particular point. You didn't, you didn't save some guy. You know, um, and I, you know, I wouldn't let him die out there either. But I, I definitely wouldn't be as impassioned about this situation as she was. Um, would I let him come in my house for a little while? Yeah, I, I can let you come in for a little while. Now, I'm not k- keeping the guy because, you know what I'm saying? I, now, I don't know exactly what's going on with this particular story. I tried to watch it again this morning before I started the show, but I was getting distracted while I was trying to start the show. I try to watch all these videos right before I go on air. Uh, but at the end of the day, I see that the woman has now this bond with this white family, and, and now she's going to be looked at as a sister, which is the way the, the white woman was presented on the news. She's going to be looked at as a sister. So I'm assuming that that white man stayed in her house for a good period of time until the white folks was able to get the uh, the brother, you know, her brother removed from that situation. That's what I believe is happening, you know? And it and she did say she lived with her fiance and her children, so I do believe that that's just gonna be the, the uh, that's just gonna be how how it's gonna be for now. We just gonna make sure this white man is good, you know. We probably not gonna wait on services to come. We done talked to this white woman who's who's this man's sister. We just gonna wait on her to get here. Cause why wouldn't she? Cause she you know she cared about that white man a, a whole great deal. Now. I'm not saying we shouldn't love each other as people. I I, I tell y'all all the time, I, I give people the human love that God said to give everybody. So would I have brought the white man in the house so he can get rescued or whatever? Yeah, sure. Sure. I, I wouldn't have let him die out there in the street for no reason. He ain't did nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? Specifically. Now, is he old enough to have done something to black folks? Yeah, that's just the way. That's just the way it goes. You know, if I'm helping an old white guy like that, it, it, is he going to be racist? Great possibility, but I still give him a chance and I, you know, take him in the house or whatever case once I see that he's just not there mentally because you're going to be able to see that he I, ain't I'm there sorry, mentally uh, if I'm it's true. Sorry, Rod. I understand the point you guys are making from the point of humanity, God, and discipline. I mean, and, and just the but what, Roger, I'm sorry, man. There are too many young, able black men that are homeless for me to have resources in extra or excess. And not prioritize them first. 
You know what? That's an excellent point, brother. That's an excellent point. <laughs> you know, and uh, that's what I do. I, I like to prioritize black men first. That's just me. You know, I, I've told y'all before, if, if I if I have some money to give, I'm going to give it to a black guy. You know what I'm saying? At this particular point in time, I'm yeah, I'm in Chicago. We're going to see people begging. That's just the way it go up here. You're going to see people begging. At this point in my life, I'm to the point that if I give anything, I'm going to give it to a black dude. If, if you're a woman, the only way you're going to get something out of me, you got to be with your husband. If, if you if you honor, you know, through sickness and health and death through y'all part and and you know, uh, richer for poor and all that. If I see you struggling out there and you begging and you're actually with the guy, okay, cool. I'll give you something. You know what I'm saying? I probably can give you something more significant because you 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 riding with your man. But if you're not with a dude, I don't even care about your story. And I'm just keeping it real, y'all. I don't care about your story if you were to do. I didn't came across a lot of women who you know say all it. Matter of fact, not. <laughs> A woman tried to hit me with the my husband just died, you know, to get some sympathy out of me or whatever case. I'm like, well, if, if your husband just died, you should still have a place to live. Like everything should be somewhat good if your husband just died, you know. So I don't believe your story at the end of the day. I'm gonna look out for me and mass. And I and I don't see nothing wrong with that. I ain't say I wouldn't help no white person, period, but I'm pretty much gonna help a black guy and, because I believe that's just what's necessary at the end of the day. You know, I'm gonna look out for us. Uh, let me read this by John the Baptist, then I'll give it to you, Alan. Uh, shout out to John the Baptist. Appreciate the super sticker, my brother. I mean, the super chat, my brother. He says, why didn't she get her kids home before the snowstorm? You know what, John? That's a very good question. But if she lives with her children and she has a fiance, more than likely, she just wanted them gone anyway. I'm just going to say that. I'm going to put that out there. <laughs> You know, that's I'm gonna see what her did, Roger, <laughs> she she pawned her kids off to somebody, a relatives or some grandmama. That's what she did. Yeah, absolutely. That's what she did. She yeah. didn't want them around. She was having a little fun with her uh, quote unquote fiance, and she didn't want the kids around. Mm -hmm. and, and and that and now that a storm is coming, if I can get you over there before the storm comes. I ain't got to deal with you till that storm is over and probably another day or two after the storm is over. You know, automatically. I can't, I can't, I would come pick my kids up, but these streets are just too rough for me to get through right now. I got to wait for, you know, streets and sanitations <laughs> to get the roads a little bit more clear. I would love to come get them, but I just can't get them right now. See, it's a perfect story, but <laughs> let me get the mic to Allen. Go ahead, brother. How you doing? Uh, doing good. Thanks for inviting me on the panel. I don't have too much to say because I'm still catching up, but I did want to say the earlier story about the lady uh, saving the dude who was doing the um the mat the school mass shooting. I just think that's sort of indicative of indicative of the quote unquote loyalty that they say they have. They always say, "Oh, we don't have this because we because we're too loyal," and it's like. When's the last time you've ever seen that for a black boy? You know, you teach your kids how to read. And, we, and, and I know we say that, but again, I have another study that I'm going to post in the back chat in the next five minutes. We have CDC proof for that. So that's just not an erroneous statement. We say just because, oh, you guys hate black women. No, 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 no. We have scientific evidence. Not, not oh, this is the crime statistics from the FBI. Like, no, this is CDC, you know, the same people that make sure that we don't have smallpox outbreaks. So that's all I wanted to say for the moment. I'll pipe back in when I have something relevant to say. Okay. And, and you know what? You know what makes this interesting? Now, I thought about this. We had a guest before that told us why he was down in Texas and all of a sudden Texas had a snowstorm of some kind. Temperatures dropped. They had snow. Now, of course, Texas is not a place that's prepared to deal with these situations. So I understand that for them, that that's something. You know, here I, I'm from Chicago, y'all. A little bit of snow ain't nothing to me. A blizzard, like, who cares? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we gonna keep on moving at the end of the day. But, yeah, Texas ain't, ain't built that way. And I understand it because of the type of weather that Texas has. Now, a panelist told us an inside story 
about how he was down there, and he didn't even pay attention to the fact that he, he was out there really doing some hero work. So it, it was past the $40, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to give him a shout out for being a hero when the, when the time came. He was out there doing hero work, and he didn't even recognize himself as doing hero work when he was doing it. And I'm not saying he was doing it to get any glory or anything like that. But he told us a story about a young lady who had three children, I believe. Okay, so you got a possible one to three baby daddies. Now, she was rebelling against her man. How do I know she's rebelling? Because she's not raising those children with him. So obviously she's in rebellion to that, to that man or to those men. And when crunch time showed up, she went into a garage turned the, the car on and her and her kids died from, from the car being on. Now, maybe she didn't know that was going to happen. You know, maybe she didn't know that was going to happen. Or maybe she wanted herself and her kids to go out peacefully. Black kids, we kill them and I'm going to kill myself. There's nothing, I don't have to deal with any of it. And people can say, well, you know, maybe that was just not a planned thing. She just didn't know no better. Well, all she had to do was talk to a man. Wasn't no man gonna tell her to go out there to the car, turn it up, well, go out to the garage, turn on the turn on the car, and just leave it running. You know what I'm saying? So you can get some temporary heat until the gas run out. That's just not a smart idea to do in the storm. But see, when you are so rebellious, when you're so rebellious against black men, you'll do stupid stuff without checking with anybody. Now, if I compare how this woman killed her three kids. And herself. And then look at the fact that, you know, you got a, a black woman who is having an issue because y'all not saving that white man quick enough for me. <laughs> you know, because that's what I got from the scenario. She had an issue because y'all wasn't saving that white man quick enough. When I call y'all, look, I got an old white man here. Y'all supposed to be responding better than this. And then the black woman who says, you know what? If it takes me getting shot, I'm willing to risk it just so I can save this young white man. Okay? Who I really, you know, and it's possibly as a minor. I'm not going to say this is not a minor, but in order to save this precious white being with the skin that I want, even though my kid is at, is at home struggling, you know, that's just the risk I'm willing to take because to me, white lives matter. But I got Wizard Kelly that came up, so I'm going to throw the mic to him. What's going on, Wizard? How you doing, brother? Doing good, doing good. Happy uh, Happy New Year to everybody on the panel. Happy New Year, brother. Happy New Year. Yep. Yeah, the this uh, uh, show topic is very thought uh, thought provoking because um, uh, a lot of the time in this space we debate about the intentionality of uh, some of the phenomenon we see with um, uh, black women, and uh, a lot of the time we spend uh, um, like uh, arguing back and forth about well. Do they know what they're doing? Do they know what the consequence of uh, doing X is going to be? Uh, do they know that um, like uh, many black children are like uh, now um, like uh, uh, considering deleting themselves? Uh, do they know that uh, these boys uh, are going to uh, uh, grow up to be in gangs and possibly die? Uh, do we know that these boys that don't read are going to be the boys that end up in prison? Do we know that the boys that can't read are going to be a large segment of uh, the the homeless population. Do we know that the boys are going to be hooked on on drugs if they don't feel so? Um, they have a like a valid role model. And the more you you uh, you think about these questions, and the more you actually like um, like a push on uh, these women to actually see how intentional some of the things they're they're doing are, the more you start to see that um, um, uh, black lives don't actually matter to these. Uh, uh, well, I wouldn't say that black lives don't matter to these women is black lives do matter and they matter in the sense that um, many of these women are intentionally seeking to be malicious and destructive towards black lives. So yes, black lives do matter, but they matter in a more malicious way. So like um, a lot of the time when we say that the phrase black lives matters, our lives do matter to people that hate us. Um, in fact, they matter too much. <laughs> But uh, yeah, with uh, many of these women, they like their modus operandi is to destroy us. So yeah, it's uh, it's really interesting to see us uh, kind of unpack the intentionality of uh, of the destruction. And, and you know what the um, and that was very good points, brother. Very good points. And and the thing is, these ain't young women. You know, 
Because people will say, well, you know, people are young and they just don't understand what, these, what they're doing. Now, these are older women. Okay? Neither one of these ladies are spring chickens, as they say. They're older. I don't know how much older, but they're obviously older. Okay? And the fact that they care so much because they came into contact with this white man that needed their help. And the other one may have just been a white boy. This white boy needs my help. I have to make sure this white boy going to be all right and ingratiate myself to this particular person. Why? Because he obviously has more value than my husband. Okay? Because she did take the time out to mention some ex-husband that left her. Well, guess what? That ex-husband might have seen the fact that that white boy and any other white person is far more valuable to you than he was. And he might have pulled out for that reason. Now, I don't know why she got to go out her way to mention him, but since you did go out your way to mention him, he probably left because he wasn't as important as white people to you. Okay? And you know what? I do believe, honestly, that sentiment has something to do with how a lot of men start acting when they when they kind of, because black men don't really leave, but they will kind of check out, you know? And I think if you're married to a woman, even though you may not look at it as white supremacy or you know you don't look at her as a white supremacist or you don't look at her behavior as white supremacy when you start finding out that all these other people who are just having to be non-black seem to be far more important than your wife than you i think that's why a lot of men will start to check out of a marriage you know they they're not going to necessarily pull the trigger on a divorce but i do believe that's why a lot of them will kind of check out on the marriage you know because my wife is supposed to be the most important people person to me and me being her husband, I'm supposed to be the most important person to her, but day in, day out, she keeps showing me that it's a lot more people on planet earth that is far more valuable to her than I am. So I think, you know, w once you live with a person who sees you that way, I think you're going to check out. If you're a normal, same person, you know, yeah, I've, I've been so, in similar situations. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I've been just uh, in similar situations um, to what you're describing with the workplace as a, as a black man where um, you, you say something, uh, what you're saying is credible, but then others uh, within the workplace want to defer to somebody who um, really doesn't know nearly as much as you do. And you see this uh, dynamic play out with uh, black men, both uh, in the professional setting, but more relevant uh, at home. We're um, on an intuitive level. We know that we don't have the 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 kind of authority other men have with their um, like uh, with their significant others. We know that um, like um, we've seen um, um, uh, videos um, uh, debating about whether or not uh, uh, black men belong to black women. And what you tend to see is on some level we do understand that. And then a lot of our behaviors, whether it's in an intimate setting where black men start checking out from the relationship by not being engaged because they understand intuitively that the woman doesn't respect them. But you also see that with uh, on a societal level where black men stop um, um, uh, idealizing, uh, providing for, uh, uh, um, for uh, black women uh, in particular because they understand on some level, even the ones that are uh, opposed to the space uh, like in their, in their conscious, on some level, they do understand the validity of uh, what we're saying, and they do check out because they do understand that these women don't respect them or see them in the same way other women see their men. You know what? I, I definitely agree with you. I definitely agree with you. And I and I do think, you know, it, it's becoming a, more of a more of an issue as people start to find out about different things. But I, I don't even know what what you what you really would want black men to do from a sensible standpoint, and I and I do believe that's why that uh, you know well it's partly why uh, SYSBM folk and passport bros get so much heat because you don't want black men checking out, <laughs> even though you don't want to see them like you do non black men. And even a non-black boy, because I don't, you know, what I'm saying I don't know for sure that this that the school shooter is a grown person. I I don't know that he's 18. She could value him this much, and he's still a child, you know. And what if he's not even a senior? What if he was like a junior or a sophomore? Because it ain't like a school shooter can't be younger, you know. Lot, you know, what I'm saying they can be older, but they also can be younger. This dude could be a sophomore. 
but she's willing to put everything at risk for this dude who's not even a grown man yet, and she got a kid who's having quote unquote multiple disabilities. And, and you know what? I did look at that statement like real funny. What? Because I've never heard somebody say my child has multiple disabilities. I've heard people say my child has this particular thing that's wrong with him. Okay. I, I'm not saying that multiple disabilities ain't possible. I guess you could have, you know, from a from a you know a human standpoint and health standpoint. Yeah, I'm sure a child can have multiple disabilities. I've never heard anyone describe it as that. And my thing is, why didn't she give the description? And, and why I'm really asking this question, not just because she's a black woman, why she didn't actually give a real description of what the disabilities were. Take into account, y'all, that she's a teacher. Teachers in particular are real particular about how people say things. I'm pretty sure some of y'all know some teachers. Aren't teachers very particular about how you talk because they're teachers and and they do this even when they retire they're still very particular on how you talk as a person so why would she not say what the disability is or what the disabilities are instead of saying multiple disabilities that that's just sound like a real funny phase from a teacher because I, I didn't been around yeah. way too many teachers y'all <laughs> yeah Raja, i completely agree um that definitely stood out to me as well. Um, and I, I'm willing to bet that it's probably some type of, it's, it's probably some autism, some type of on the spectrum of autism or ADHD or something like that. I'm willing to bet that. And I'm willing to bet that, you know, whatever diagnosis it uh, allegedly is or whatever, it, it's really, it has nothing to do with, uh, I, she's probably um, negligent in her uh, her duties as a parent. And also, man, great point you guys brought up. Uh, you brought it up earlier, Roger, as far as uh, her ex-husband checking out. And and just imagine if she's actually uh, currently dating, maybe trying to, you know, find a new husband, you know, maybe, possibly. I mean, I doubt it. But let's say she's in a, in a some man is taking interest in her for whatever reason and possibly will want to marry her. You know what I mean? Uh, how would that look to him? Like, what sane man look at that? Look at her. This is the one for him. He's willing to sacrifice her own life. I mean, possibly, you know, maybe she she probably doesn't believe that she'll actually get shot or whatever, get killed or whatever. But she's willing to sacrifice her own life for a criminal, like for for someone with murderous intentions. You know what I mean? It's it's real. Yeah, so what type of sane man would actually stick around for that? And to, and to add to that, Roger, I, I wanted to, the, the way she, do you see in the video when she was talking about how we all have the same troubles when she was talking about it and then she's like, and there's a God above that sits on high and looks on low. And uh, it's almost like she was like, it was just my duty to save this person. It's, it, it's like, it's like this, is, this, is your, this is where your altruism comes into play. This is where I'm like, you get what I'm saying, Roger. This is where your humanity comes into play. Not when you're aborting the amount of children that you're doing. Not when your your children have no parents. Not when you basically not give them generational wealth. Not when you make them poor. Not when you I'm saying. Not when you basically disparage the name of other black women that are good black women and you publicly disparage them. I'm saying that's that's not when your humanity comes into play. Your humanity comes into play when a man comes into school to murder people. Because he wants to be superior to everyone in the world, and we won't let him. So that that's that's when your humanity comes into play. I, I digress, bro. <laughs> uh, Turbo, K well, <laughs> K not that's a hell of a statement, bro. That's that's all I can say to that one. That, that's a hell of a statement, but it does need to be considered. Uh, you know, if you value other humans. Do you wait for these particular situations in order to value them? That's a great question at the end of the day. And honestly, for a lot of black women, yeah, they got to be into this type of situation for them to show that they value a black person. Well, no, I can't even say that because you know what? What's she doing? She's just doing what's normal. Black women have always valued white, white lives. It, it ain't just the men. It ain't just the women. They've always valued the children. They just, 
it's a value of that skin tone. Point blank, period. The less melanin in your skin, the more they they value you. They go right, you know, lock and step with that narrative. And I've I, seen this since I was a child. Go ahead. I'd, I'd like to touch on that point that was previously stated about um, the news. Actually, um, there, there's a term for this that um, uh, I, I won't say the content creator's uh, name is, but uh, he calls it racial showcasing. So whenever there's uh, incidents like this where you have a, a, a white man going out to um, like uh, kill all those um, to, to, to commit like a, a mass uh, killing, um, if you could have a black person uh, to uh, garner sympathy for the individual that's going out to harm others, then the uh, part of the strategy for um, like uh, making people more sympathetic to these kinds of people is to use women like this in order to showcase. And in the case of uh, the sto snowstorm incident, what we saw was an over the top, um, 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 like um, uh, obviously the woman like uh, did do something good by rescuing like uh, somebody who's developmentally delayed outside. But like um, if the media went out of their way uh, to, um, to, to uh, kind of venerate her in such a way that it showed like, uh, it kind of made the woman like a, a mammy. Uh, they were kind of like uh, saying some subtly, like uh, like mocking things. Anybody who's grown around um, white people uh, understands that there's certain ways they'll say things in order to mock you. And a lot of the time, because uh, we as black people tend to categorize things as, is this person saying something friendly or are they saying something negative? And we don't really see the nuances of what's being communicated based on the word selection. Uh, in these cases, what you end up seeing is the media promoting a mammy narrative, and then they're also mocking these uh, women as well, too. So they'll say certain things in order to get the woman going. They'll uh, uh, compliment her, but the compliments aren't compliments. They're subtle digs. They're actually like a form of mockery. And then um, like uh, they do this in order to get these white women, I mean, these black women who are starved for uh, this um, approval to uh, uh, play along with it to, to their own uh, detriment. Hey, you know what? That that's that is something that we do need to be pay far more attention to than, than what we really do. And you know, the the mammy narrative is great for for uh, white folks because you know they want black women in service to them. So I, I don't see how that's ever going to be a problem for them. So I totally get why they want to make this a big deal. You know, she did what I would assume most people would do. If you hear a person outside. And you're an intelligent adult. You see that they can't really think like an adult. You know, you may look at them funny, but the fact that they're an older person, you should have some sympathy for them in the first place. That an older person is outside during a winter storm, and then the fact that they really can't effectively communicate. Yeah, your heart should go out to them somewhat. But uh, you know, if if this type of stuff is presented in a way that you know, just leave it to a black woman when when you're in trouble, and white people gonna be okay. That I mean, of course they gonna they gonna push that hard when it comes to mainstream media. They're gonna push it hard because mainstream media knows what it's doing, y'all. Again, somebody said a long time ago, but they were correct. They said ain't nothing on television an accident. Okay, are we back, and, are we back to this, Roger? This 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 idea of us always being humane, always leaving ourselves vulnerable. Regardless of our circumstance, I'm saying when people sign sign bills and sign things and just put it out of their minds what the ramifications of that signing is, people deploy armies knowing what's going to happen and put it against their mind. So basically, so wait, let me get this straight, right? You're supposed to basically feel terrible for saying, you know what happened? I have no idea who that person is. I am very comfortably safe in my home in a blizzard. I understand that it basically will be humane in this particular instance. To do this, but you know what happened? This it's the risk to reward ratio and or whatever I don't reward whatever like moral reward you can get from it. It's not worth it. Versus basically people that know they're doing things that leads to the demise of, of um, lots of people, and they just put it out of their mind and sign away. Dude, like dude, we are not responsible for the entire world, man. And I'm not saying that basically <laughs> that basically one could basically be completely ice. But I'm just saying that like we got to start making these calculations like. Like real calculations, man. I'm like, I'm saying, it's like these, this whole idea is like, like, like the full. I'm like, come on, man. It's like, I'm like, I just want, I just want us as people to be appropriately aware of our circumstances. We are, we, our situation is on multiple levels. You're know saying, mm -hmm. what I mean by multiple levels is that it is not. You're know saying you can't disarm yourself. 
it is not a, a, a viable approach. You see what happened to the black women. They disarmed themselves fully, uh, availed themselves to the system. Three generations later on, well, you, you are still trying to save them, Roger. The other men are giving up on them. Their, their situation is very destitute. They, they literally are 100% de 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 depend upon the government every way. We're to the point that they're doing things to their own men and, and, and boys because they depend upon these people. You know what I'm saying? saying this, this, this army, it, it, it doesn't work, Roger. We have to be logical in our recourse. We can't just say because no. he's outside and, and, and because it's snowing, it is a good thing, the moral thing to do, a Christian thing to do. Yes, in a world of other people like ourselves, that will be the moral thing to do. But we don't live in a world of people like ourselves. Well, you, you know, I was trying to say that I was, yeah, I do definitely agree uh, get what you're saying. And I was trying to say it in the context of how most people are going to feel. But you are 100% correct. You have to make calculations. Now, me being the person that I am, you know, and I'm from Chicago, so we can have snowstorms here. If we got a snowstorm and I see a white man <laughs> outside, right? I see a, a white a white man outside caught in the snow. Okay. It happened to, he happens to be by, by where I live. Yeah, I don't think that's a good look for me. I'm going to keep it real. <laughs> I understand why somebody else would do it because they're going to have this sympathy thing that's going to take over. You know, but realistically, I live in Chicago. I'm not going to take that white man in my house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think sometimes we struggle with um, uh, navigating with the nuance because when you look at um, most Caucasian people, if you're um, like a, in any kind of trouble, it's very common for Caucasian people to come and actually help you. They're very forthcoming with their with their help. Um, but like the, the, the way in which they maintain power is they're both kind on an individual level, but as far as group dynamics go, um, they know how to, uh, wind up with all the power. And because we don't have the same ability to, uh, navigate like, uh, when we should be like, uh, like, uh, helping people. And when we're not, uh, we end up with a situation where now we have to take things to the extreme. I'm not saying whether or not it's good or, or, uh, bad to, uh, like, uh, to, to close yeah. To, to, to cut everybody else uh, uh, um, uh, off and never help anyone is the issue is just the um, we, we deal with uh, the, the polar ends of the spectrum, whereas white people are very good at even masterful, like even at the workplace, if you're working at the lower job, they know that they could be very friendly with you. But like if you're working above them, then they know how to shift the dynamic because now they're under pressure from the fact that you're getting the majority of the money. And for us, it's like we, we end up just making these um, very uh, strong declarative statements that are going to be unable to be maintained. If you see somebody out there who's like um, even just looking at the person is very mentally diminished. If I see somebody out there in a wheelchair or whatever, um, going out to help this person who's uh, in a wheelchair or um, mentally diminished or somehow uh, like uh, limited by their uh, in their ability to get out of uh, the elements uh, when it's a uh, middle of a snowstorm. That's 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 not what's holding black people back. No, but you know what? You you you're right on that. That's that's not what's holding us back. But I I, I do got to say this, y'all. I'm just saying from a realistic level, as a black man who lives in Chicago, I see a person. Even if I see they they have a mental issue going on, I need to call a white person to come help this person. Now I got human love for people, so I ain't gonna just quote unquote let you die. I might go get a blanket or something. Put that on you, whatever case is, because I see you're not all the way there. But I need to call a white person to come help you. So, what? Yeah, I'll call the police and say, hey, it's a white guy who's obviously not there mentally, who's outside in a snowstorm or whatever. I'm not taking the dude to my crib. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? And that may sound real bad to y'all or whatever. I don't think I'm going to take a dude in, in my house. I just don't, no, I don't. Taking him in the crib, that just opens the door to too much stuff. It could happen. There's too much stuff to a bad news story. I can see it now. The uh, yeah, the uh, they say the gentleman was trying to help the white guy, but we don't know why the white guy was in the man's home in the first place. He exactly. didn't seem to know the guy. Blah blah exactly. blah, and all that. So taking him in my home, it sounds good. Yeah, we said. Yeah. I'm like, they they, they could have twisted that story so many ways. That's why I'm saying one has to calculate. I'm not saying that we we should be cold. But we we are in a scenario where we should be more calculated and less open. I'm saying because the rules of Christianity is a great rule, but essentially they are not basically applicable so much in our current environment. <laughs> as as I'm saying, you know, I'm not saying that 
I'm saying that incorrectly. As a Christian, I do, I do, I, I do believe in the word, and I, and I, and I, and I understand the, the validity of it. Though there is a part of the Bible that does indicate that one should basically, essentially, strengthen themselves against adversary. So it's I'm saying, and be and be intelligent. So it is not just open where everything and everyone. I'm saying that's that's what I'm trying to get across, Roger. In a sense that we, no, we can't be that way. It is it's not a prudent way to live. You, you're right. It's, uh, I wasn't saying that whether or not you, you're right or wrong. My, my point was only that, um, um, like, uh, what the, what's actually like uh, bringing us down isn't necessarily our um, our kindness. It's our inability to like um, a white person could like uh, bring you a pie. A, a white person could um, uh, like uh, give you a job, but um, it's like um, the, the, they're still going to know how to um, kind of navigate in such a way that they end up with a power. But what you're saying is 100 percent as uh, insistent as um, uh, the racism has become, where we like uh, had like uh, essentially like a racial mutiny on the government a couple a couple like uh, like a years ago. And the fact that we're being gunned down on the street and the fact that anything could happen to you, uh, we're in the middle of a war. So um, I, I actually don't don't uh, disagree with you because, yeah, like uh, uh, we're in the middle of a situation where uh, one group of people uh, well, multiple groups of people have declared a war on us. They're putting up propaganda about us attacking uh, yes. Asian people. They're putting up propaganda against uh, us hating um, like uh, small hats. Um, they're yes. putting up propaganda yes. saying that we're super uh, predators. So what you're saying is wholly valid. No, I agree. That's and matter fact, and that's... Go, ahead. Go ahead, Roger. Well, I I'm just going to say, look, I can still be a Christian and do the Christian thing but I can do it in a good and safe way for me. Meaning what? If I see you on the street, yeah, I'll go get you the blanket because if I call the authorities, I know how the authorities can be. They may take a little bit of time, you know what I'm saying, to get to you. I'll go get you a blanket. I may even give you something to eat. I'm probably not going to tell you where I live. I'll probably say, hey, I live nearby. You know, <laughs> you know, I'll go bring you this if you just stay right here. You know, you know, but at the end of the day, it's only so much I can do because I'm not going to put myself in jeopardy for random people like that. I got to really love you to be willing to die for you. Now, now the, the good book said that's the greatest love a, a man can give is be willing to die for somebody else. I'm not saying that ain't true at all. I'm saying right now I don't have that love for every single individual out here. I don't love y'all like that. I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> Very few people that I love enough to put my life on the line for. So, yeah, I'll go get you. Somebody said in the chat, you know, I'll go get you a cup of hot cocoa or something, and, you know, I'll get you a, a blanket or whatever. i tell the authorities where you're located. I'll give them a proper address so they can get, get to you without a problem if they want to get to you. But I'm not going to be one of those people that if they don't make it and you die, I'm supposed to feel bad. That wasn't my issue. I don't know who you belong to. I just know you don't belong to me. That's what I do know. You're not mine. <laughs> so and can, I throw in, can I throw in something too uh, particularly about the the first link um, sometimes I think we do over I mean I'm not saying this is the case right here but I do think I'd like to consider this and I'm sure some of you um, gentlemen have already considered this that maybe we're overcomplicating things maybe I mean a lot of times from my experience my 44 years on this earth and dealing with many 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 black women um they're not altruistic in that in that manner for the most part. Now, are they more inclined to do that for a white person? I would say absolutely yes, absolutely. But typically, if they can't get anything out of the situation, they're not going to put themselves in, um, typically, again, um, they're not going to put themselves in harm's way or do anything out of their way unless they can get some gain from it. So, I mean, it could be a case with this first lady where she was just, Trying, her kids were away, you know, again, during a snowstorm where she could be, you know, keeping them in a safe place with her, you know, they were somewhere else and she decided she saw the opportunity. There's a, a crying old, uh, dis, uh, I guess, mentally disabled man out there. Maybe I can just, you know, throw him, get him in my house, or go convince, get my fiance to get him in my house. And then, hey, nine, um, you guys, your emergency operator, 911, y'all better come get him. He ain't going to die up in here. And I did, you know, I did enough so maybe I can get some some type of acclaim or some type of reward or something. It could be as simple as that. 
And I'm not saying that's the case, but again, they are more inclined to do something like that for uh, someone that's not black or a white person. But it could be as simple as that. Hey, I'm just trying to get some acclaim, get something out of this. Um, and I think I've done my job. My fiance has done this. And and I know. And the fact that um, the the man's sister was the one speak. Why didn't she tell she didn't even tell her her side of the story? Um, the sister was speaking for her. So I think maybe having that woman speak for herself and what she did, it will probably be revealed that she wasn't really altruistic or being a, a hero, so to speak. You know what I mean? But and, and that's just another ask, another way to possibly look at it. Now, Jada, I'm going to say to you real quick, you may want to jump off and come back because you have been boring a little bit. We, we kind of heard you there, but you, you have, well, I don't know what you say you're driving, so it might be you driving, but you may want to think about that. Um, but I do agree with you. And getting favor with white people has always been seen as something important to, to black women. So I think she definitely got her reward. The only question is how much of a reward she got because she she's going to even get some endearment to this to this family if they're telling the truth. You know, the white woman say that's like a sister to her now. So if they tell the truth, she's now endeared to this white family. That's all she needed at the end of the day. She needed less than that to be happy because the dude was white. Point blank, period. Black women have always helped a white person without a sense of I need some, to get back something. When they need to get back something, it's usually because they're dealing with a black man. But I've never seen black women say they have to get something back for helping a white person out. Okay, I, I've been around some people who who claim to be very pro-black, but I've never really seen them obligate white people to give them anything. Okay, well, that's the point. What'd you say? What'd you say, Canada? I said, that's their programming. Just like how we have our programming where we basically jump to the aid of black women, that's their programming too, to basically to, to they, it's almost like a survival thing where I've given up the men on my side, which normally what would what would hold me up. So psychologically, I understand that I don't have any backup. So I avail myself to th these people and their system. So they are my benefactors. So we are in somewhat symbiosis. So they have to survive for me to continue to. So, you know what I'm saying? This is why it's so easy for them to get on board with our destruction, Roger. You know what I'm saying? Is that, is that same programming? That's how I was mentioned. But nevertheless, go ahead. Read a super chat. No, no. I, I, I totally get you. I totally get you. Uh, shout out to Son is Hara. He say, black women will save a white baby who is a... Uh, what the, Did he mean murderer? I'm a, I'm a, he got MS here. A, a black woman will save a white boy. That's got to be white boy who is a ma mass shooter. That's what he's saying. A black woman will save a white boy who was a mass shooter, but would delete their their babies for being a constant reminder of their baby daddy. Now, boy, son is high rock. I can't say you wrong. I can't say you wrong. Um, you know, because you know, unfortunately, there's, there's been so many abortions I had. We can't. We don't even know for sure if she ain't never had an abortion. You know, to 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 just make an assumption that a random black woman hasn't had an abortion. I don't know if, the, if if that's a safe assumption. I will have to look into what the percentages are, if there's any information out there about percentages. But with the, the amount that they've had, I don't know if that's a safe assumption to make that a black woman hasn't had an abortion if she's 30 or up. You know, maybe, you know, she 18, 19, you can say it, it ain't may have happened yet. But but yeah, that, that's something else. So again, so as Hot Rod is saying with Super Chat, and thank you for the super chat, brother. He says black women will save a white boy who was a mass shooter, but will delete their babies for being a constant reminder of their baby daddy. That's a powerful statement, brother. Can I argue with that statement? Not really. I, I wouldn't even want to take on that argument at the end of the day. Because because y'all y'all have heard me say plenty of times, I don't think there's a, a lawyer in America good enough to prove a case that black women love their children. I don't think you got a lawyer that good. You know, if you start thinking all the good things some black women do versus all the negative things that I do believe most black women do. I don't think he can win that case. I don't think she can win that case. Yeah, you know, in fact, I don't even think it's a woman that can win that case. She ain't going to even think about it enough from their side to, to win a case like that, to, to say that that uh, black women actually love their children. You know, because now we got this child with multiple disabilities, whatever that's supposed to mean. 
We got a child with multiple disabilities, and his mama out here willing to take a bullet for this uh, white man shooter if necessary. That sounds crazy in itself to me. Now, usually, if you got kids, that would be a reason that a woman would say she didn't do something. Well, I would have did the right thing, but, you know, I got kids at home, and my kids are dependent upon me. And they would have used that, that uh, my father, wait, I mean, my husband left me, which means my child has to depend on me and ain't got nobody else. That's usually how that would go. So, to me, I did find it very interesting that she's willing to put it all at risk for this white boy nine times out of ten, because I'm pretty sure it was a boy. She put it, yeah, it, for that white boy, oh, it's nothing to put my life on the line for him. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure he's okay. You know, and, I, and I'm and i pretty sure that when the case come up, she's going to testify on his behalf. You know, I'm pretty sure that, you know, with everything else she said, I don't see how she's not going to testify on on his behalf. And uh, John the Baptist, thank you for the super chat, my brother. He said that case would be thrown out. <laughs> so, man, if somebody accused black women saying, say, hey, they, they don't love their children <laughs> before the lawyer would even have a chance to defend they throw the case out, huh? <laughs> uh, you're probably right, John the Baptist. You, you're probably right. They probably would just throw the case out because they don't even want that to happen. You know what I'm saying? They don't even want that to even go to trial, okay? They don't even want that to go to trial. And shout out to John the Baptist again. He did say something. He put something very interesting in in the uh, the, the regular chat. Uh, John the Baptist says, watching both the videos, I see a common thing. Black women care more about, excuse me, black women care more for dysfunctional, killer, mentally disabled white men more than their black husband and their black kids. John, I think that was an excellent point that you put right there, brother. That's an excellent point. Because, yeah, we are talking about somebody who's a little mentally, you know what I'm saying, a little mentally disabled. We we see, you know, with the with the uh, white man, the, the older white man. Now, you can say the same thing about a, a, somebody who came in and shoot the school up as well. You can claim that they're mentally disabled until they really find something out. But it, he, he don't look to be the sanest <laughs> when you come to shoot up the school. Uh, but yeah, they, they, they seem to care more about these people than their own husband. Cause one got a fiance and I don't know if that's a, a actual fiance. Cause I do think a lot of women just claim a guy's their fiance. If they've been with them for like more than five years, they just say it's my fiance. Nigga ain't never proposed. She ain't got no ring, but it sounds better at a, at a family event. When you say my fiance versus my boyfriend and it's been seven, eight years in. And he's still just your boyfriend. So I think they just say that to make it sound better. And that's just you know the truth behind it. Now, I can't argue it because I don't know her enough to, to know whether it's true or not. But I don't get no... I really doubt that she got an actual fiancé. And also, shout out to Afro National for the Super Chat. He said, salute Roger. Support black male media. Hey, y'all, do that. Support black male media. We do actually need y'all to justify us doing this on a regular basis. And I do appreciate everybody who financially supports this channel because, yeah, I'm definitely going to do what I can to get black people where they need to be. But I do need financial support to justify, you know, and for me to give up doing other things, I got to be solid here. So appreciate that, brother. Appreciate that. Shout out to Hot Sauce who done joined the panel. So I'm going to turn it over to him. What's going on, my brother? I'm I'm doing well, Roger. Hope everything is I hope everyone is doing well, staying warm, and all that good stuff. So um I'm coming in clearly, correct? I'm coming yes, in sir. Board game. Okay. Nah, so nah, first fine. first I want to give a shout out to black women eyesight. They got some exceptional eyesight with all that snow on the ground, <laughs> you can still spot a white man. Kudos to you, man. Carrots or something. God damn. So first, shout out, shout out to women eyesight. You know what I mean. So, and second, man, I, you know what, man, she's just being a good Samaritan. I can't be mad at a house nigga for doing house nigga shit, right? How she just bent over, blew the little soup on the spoon, feeding them like man, like I can't, you know what I mean? Like I can't be mad at that. You can clearly see, like, you know, I think she's a nurse or something like that. She wear her nurse scrubs. And I'm pretty sure she treats the white patients better than all the other patients, right? She's a mammy, so we can't 
we can't really get mad at that. Now, the second video, now that that's some crazy shit. That is some crazy shit. And I'm going to tell you why. Because there's shootings all the time in Southside Chicago. <laughs> they're shooting all the time <laughs> in, in North Philly, right? Where are black women at? Right? And it's their children that are doing that shit. So let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. You see a white boy with a gun that you don't know from Adam, and you're going to sit there and talk to him. But your niece, ne- your nephew, right, your 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 daughter's son, got a gun about to shoot up the block, and all y'all gonna do is just cry on Channel Ten News, talking about somebody gotta stop this madness. How the fuck does that sound? That is some insane shit. That is some insane shit. Like, cause ain't, ain't like I said, man, ain't no, ain't, cause I don't care what nobody say. White, this is okay. Before I say this, this is the opinion of, of hot sauce. This has nothing to do with with uh the Roger report. White people have demonstrated they're the most violent motherfuckers in history. So ain't no motherfucking. I mean, when when people get mad in the hood, you somebody else might get hit, but you shooting at that one nigga. White person gets upset. The whole cafeteria is getting shot up. Every motherfucking body. Don't give a fuck about who. And now you're going to tell me you're going to go talk to this motherfucker who could have possibly shot you because that's what they do when they get upset. Everybody gets shot, just like in higher learning, right? Remy didn't go shoot Ice Cube for, for when Ice Cube whipped his ass. Remy ran, ran right up the tower, higher learning for the people who don't know that movie. Remy ran right up to the top, got to the about tower and start shooting everybody. And God bless her soul, Tyra Banks, unfortunately, got hit. But the point of the matter is that's how they do. And you're gonna tell me this black woman just decided to just get in her bag of tricks and be like, hey, let's talk. But you can't talk to to your own sons and nephews and shit. Because, I mean, shit, like Chris Rock says, bullets are expensive. We aiming at that one nigga, right? So, I don't know, man. That shit, this shit's crazy to me, man. Somebody got to explain this to me, man. I don't know. Somebody got to explain this shit. You know what, brother? (laughs) Excellent points again. Excellent points again. Now, I've always said that when it comes to uh, white folks, you know, if you want to involve yourself with them individually, I mean, that's cool. An individual white person, yeah, they can be great. But when you start looking at white folks from a collective standpoint, the view don't look so good. You know what I'm saying? Because they do a lot of stuff and they just into a lot of stuff that uh, I'll say we as black men would consider to be weird. Okay? Just is what it is. We would consider that stuff to be weird. You know? And uh, that that ain't necessarily taking a shot at white folks because I know there's some white people who listen. But at the end of the day, Everything y'all do don't look sane to us. Some stuff gonna look weird to other groups of people. So y'all do some stuff that we consider a little bit weird here and there, but you know, everybody got their own cultures and their own yeah, little I, I, things I about mean, themselves. It is what it is. You know? I, I'm, mad at, I'm mad at the motherfucker in chemistry class. I'm gonna go to the cafeteria and shoot up everybody and that motherfucker not even in there. That shit don't make sense. <laughs> yeah, it, it don't. It don't. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna get with the person who actually did it to me. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm going to go after everybody else. Yeah, they, they don't make a whole lot of sense to me. But, you know, white folks collectively have never made a whole lot of sense to me. I, I'm going to keep it real. That, that, I'm not saying I don't look at y'all as human. Y'all just have always done some stuff that it just don't make a lot of sense to me. You know, uh, but shout out to John the Baptist. He said, hot sauce. She heard, <laughs> she heard the voice from her deep sleep and then saw him in the snow. After dancing on the pole all night. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So you got like they got Superman, they got Superman vision and fucking hearing. Because I I'm, I'm letting you know, man, with all that snow I see on the news, I'm not spotting a white person in that shit. I'm sorry. Like this motherfucking bear under the snow and shit. I'm not, I mean, goddamn they got some good eyesight. So that's all I gotta say. 
Yeah, um, you know, and, and my thing is, y'all, we got to look at how subtle this stuff is and how it's being presented because when you look when you look at these videos, you know, offhand, you just be like, oh, okay, well, the black lady says some some white person, that's a great thing to do. So you like it's like you ain't gonna come down on them because they they did quote unquote save somebody. But dang, when they gonna save us, y'all? When they gonna save us? Now they say, well, if you say when they gonna save us, you supposed to be protecting us. Well, what, what, what was these white? These were two white guys. These wasn't white women. You know what I'm saying? So if you gonna say it to a black man, well, y'all supposed to be protecting us. Well, ain't they? You know, if you think me and owe you protection, wouldn't they owe you some kind of protection if you believe that white people and black people are supposed to look at each other that way? You know what I'm saying? Sure. I mean, they're not I even mean, your color at the end of the day. So yeah, you know. I mean, if we're a community, we. I mean, look, man, shame on her if there was some other black men out there or black people out there that needed help. Shame on her because it's quicker to see a nigger in the snow than a white man. So shame on her if that's the case, man, because at the end of the day, we we supposed to be community, right? So I t- look, shit, I don't got the best eyesight, but I'll, I'll see a black person in the snow before I see a white one. So shit. I mean, that make a lot of sense. I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying it do make some sense. Uh, and, and and I don't get it because uh, you know, and I'm not saying nothing bad about the white guy. If he, if he only mentally there to up to an 11 year old, yeah, I get why he's gonna have problems. I don't know why he ain't somewhere because you know, one thing I don't get is why is this guy like able to roam on his own anyway? Does anybody care about this white guy? And if don't nobody care about this white guy? How much should I be vested in this particular white guy? Because this white guy with the man of the 11 year old, according to his sister, how he end up in the snow in the first place? Because that don't make a whole lot of sense to me. Yeah. You know? And, and the white woman I mean, also, we're going to come get him. From where? But, I mean, but, where, where was it? Where, where he been? <laughs> and, but if you Go look ahead. at the white, if you look at the white woman, the new, she ain't looked too happy that he was found. She wasn't like, oh my God, thank you. We've been searching all day. She was like, Bitch, you fucked up the plan. You're supposed to dump this motherfucker off and get the hair in his. I mean, that's what her facial expression. Like, these niggas always fucking up shit. Right? She, Because she didn't look like, oh, my God, we've been searching high and low. She was just like, oh, y'all found them. Oh. Yeah, and you know what? That's a very good point, brother. Because, yeah, she, she didn't seem like she was relieved that he was found. Cause you would think if my if I got a brother out there with a man of an eleven year old, and my brother was missing, especially for a good period of time, cause he's in another city at this point, yeah. I would be relieved if somebody found my brother. <laughs> you know that's how it would come across to me. But uh, y'all fucking up the the the, the life insurance <laughs> shit right now. <laughs> right, like he got to be dead for me to get what I'm gonna get, yeah. and, and we had him in a great situation for that to happen, and and now y'all want to celebrate the fact that you ruined our situation. It did yeah. kind of come across that way. I can't I mean, say that she was right. plotting against her brother, but I do gotta she, ask: How does a, a guy with the 11 year old's mindset be on his own? She was not happy. She was not fucking happy. That white lady was not happy at all. She wasn't. Elated, she didn't. She wasn't very, you know, grateful or anything. She, her mouth was just open, like you black bitch. Like that's why I took. <laughs> hey, brother, another fan point. Another fan point. And she said she would have to go to that city. If you have the mind of an eleven year old, why is he not in your city, bro? They dropped that nigga one. off. <laughs> They dropped that nigga <laughs> off in the hood. But let, let me go drop him off with these niggas because they don't take care of shit. You know, he going to blend in with the snow and we're going to collect this insurance money. Did she get that phone call from the news? She didn't look happy, man, like this bitch. Hey, you know, you may be joking, but you may be no, serious because my thing I'm is... Serious. I am serious. That was her expression. Yeah. She was not happy. I'm serious. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and and I got to think how you know, y'all. I mean, just be realistic. It, it, would, uh, would you expect a normal eleven-year-old 
to be in a different city or state if they ran away, or even if they went out to be on their own? Like, how far are they going to make it on their own? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, how far is it? So unless you get another deranged adult involved, how far is an 11-year-old going to make it? So if he got the I mindset mean, of an 11-year-old, come on, now, how you end up in front of the house and there's no in the first place? Well, I mean, he can't even feed himself, right? Because, like, from the video, she was feeding him, right? So he's kind of an invalid, right? I mean, if you can't feed yourself, you ain't making it to the next state over. I don't give a fuck what you say. Yeah, that's a suspect situation, but I ain't going to even trip because, like I said, white people have always done some stuff that I... See, to me, it seems weird anyway. I don't know why you would have an 11 year old and just have them out there on their own and just be cool with it if that's what was going on, even though it does seem like that's what was going on. And I'm gonna say, shout out to Tampa Bomb, thank you very much for the super chat, my brother. He said, He said, with white folks drunk and hearing ye hee haw, leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Maybe some of that happened right before they let him out the vehicle. <laughs> they might have been <laughs> ye, 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 ye home right before they pulled over, <laughs> and they specialized van, you know. Because, uh, yeah, I, I was I was questioning that situation myself. How did he end up in front of this lady's house? But she dropped. Off. Shout out! To, <laughs> <laughs> shout out to John the Baptist as well. He says, Roger, that was my thought. Why didn't her sister come get him? Get oh, he had to man. Why didn't his sister come get him before the snow blizzard? You you, you know what? Um, I honestly believe that wherever this white guy is, the sister never had any intentions on coming to get him. Period. That's just my personal opinion. Okay, because yeah. personally, to me, once you once you admit that your brother. Can only think like an eleven year old. How is he in a city that you're not in? He he would have to be with some really strange and demented people to meet anybody, and then they see that he's got a mind of a child, but they want to deal with him anyway. Like, how does that happen? It 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 just don't make sense at the end of the day. It just don't make sense. So I don't even know how you get to that point unless it's intentional. And that's just yeah. me, you know. Well, I mean, he didn't that, mention like another. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I mean, because that, that was my thing, right? Because when he was like, because cause the, the the black guy, he was like, he was trying to like invoke emotion in an interview, right? Just to kind of get this to be like a feel good, a great feel good story. And he was like, how do you feel? How do you feel? And her mouth just was gaped a little bit, like like her shaking her head in disbelief. Like, like you know, this is what, a, a storm of a century. This is a once in a lifetime thing where we can tell people, oh, this nigga just got caught up. And now, because when's the next snowstorm like this is ever going to hit, right? Because this is like, what, once in a hundred years? So, you know, if this was the time, you know, and she just shook her head in disbelief and like, just say, oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're you know, we're so thankful. But I mean, you can just clearly see by her body language and demeanor. She didn't, like, there was no tears, no emotion, no, you know, she was just like stone face. Shade master, that's because she wanted him to be left for dead. To be truthful, yeah, that, that's my theory, man. That's my theory. I agree with you. So, so basically, if you're trying to get a white man done in, don't do it around a uh, don't do it around a black woman. <laughs> well, <laughs> she gonna play, gonna play Captain see, Save a white man. But see, the thing about it is, like the first one, I don't, I, I like you know, because like you know, you go back to slavery and. You know, Oprah Winfrey being the mammy of white America. I mean, that's what black women were brought here to do, right? So, I mean, you can't be mad. Like, you know what I mean? You can't be mad at a stripper for doing stripper shit. And you can't be mad of a black woman for doing that, right? We know black women have a low level hate for black men. We know that black women are always going to be the mammy for white people. And we know that black women are always going to nurture and give that extra little respect to white people so we so you know when i see that man i'm just thinking you know this is what black women do i can't be mad at that right but the second one's but, but, a crazy chick well, well you know what though hot sauce my 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 thought process is most black men don't know that white that, that black women feel that way about white men because we don't think about it and then when we think about it 
we don't have the context to say that this woman is a white supremacist because she's black. You're not going to really just think white supremacy when you're looking at a black person, period. You know, and and again, white supremacy was taught to all of us. So sometimes yeah. you ain't going to catch it because you ain't shared enough of it yourself. <laughs> No, that's true. true. That's true. That's true too. But I mean, but what she did, because I mean, like you know, I mean, black women have told us time and time again, right? I ain't gonna struggle with you. I can do all bad by myself. I'm not. I'm not building the boo. All that shit, right? They they basically told you, nigga, you on your own. So yeah. But I'm just saying, it, it takes a little while for some of us to actually see it and hear it. You know, but but let me let AL get in here. AL, go ahead, brother. How you doing? Uh, I'm fine. Uh, peace to the panel in the chat. Long live the bitch alive, stepping. Yeah, yeah. You know how we do. Uh, what's going on, Shay Master 9000? Now, I just basically came up to piggyback off of what Shay was talking about. Uh, other than that, I feel nothing for this whole situation. It is what it is. We know how they do. We know how they've been raised. They, you know, the concubines of the other, other team, you know what I'm saying? They go always find a way to look after them. Us, they can give two motherfuckers shakes about it unless we, we, we shelling that, dealing that, you know, they kill it at the end of the day. But I digress. Yeah. Now, uh, I'm going to say, as far as the chat is concerned, uh, I don't know how he pronounces this. Uh, Ani, Aninomus? I don't know how you pronounce that. Aninomus, I guess. Um, he says, wasn't black women bought, brought to America to breed with white men and to raise the children and raise their children brood mares? No, that wasn't the point of them uh, being brought over. They were, they were brought over to, um, to bring in more slaves because the thing was that with the with the uh, the slave trade, they were stopping it and they was making it illegal to continue to go to Africa to make slaves. So they brought women over here so women can start breeding slaves and to be the concubines of white men. They wasn't yeah. over here to uh, to uh, they they wasn't really over here to have babies with white men. But if they had a white baby, they just had hey, you know, the mother gonna determine um if it's a slave or not. So they just made it. But legally, so they can't even say it's not even against the law. If your mama was black, then you, you were slave. And that's how they did that. So they were they were over here to serve as white men in, in two huge different ways. One, to be a concubine, but the main way was to produce more slaves so they don't have to go overseas and get any new ones to bring them over. That's That was the purpose of that. Yeah, 1878. 1878, that happened. And, uh, Shout out to Tampa Bong. He done came and joined the panel. So, Tampa, you got the phone, my brother. How you doing? Yo, Roz, I'm doing well. Um, thank you always for the opportunity to speak. Shout out to the brothers on the panel and everybody in the chat. You know, I, I'll just make this brief. Um, wow. Just, it, it, it is quite amazing the feats um, that you, people will go through to um, save their savior. Uh, to save the one that they hold up, the, the one that they exalt so much and so highly, you know, uh, Brad can do no wrong. I mean, you get, you have a situation where I know people want to commend, you know, the basic humanity uh, of it all. And when you help someone, of course, if they uh, don't have the mental capacity, you, you know, you want to initially you, you know you want to go out there and give them their, their, their props you want to give them their flowers but you know questions has to be asked in, in terms of like where do you, where's your humanity actually being directed um i'm the proponent of being definitely biased i'm definitely a proponent of discrimination and some would say that you know might be somewhat racist but if you're giving your charity towards your people and your community and your help, then absolutely you shall be commended. But if you're really giving your charity 
your help, your love, your extra hand, your discretionary time and resources just to get an applause, just to be accepted, uh, or just because the pro uh, the programming kicks in, you know, Emperor Emperor Palpatine, you know, did Rule sixty six or Program sixty six or what was it? Uh, Program sixty six, whatever it was, a Star Wars reference, whatever that is, it kicked in your head, Execute and you are going to 66. save White Master. God, execute true execute that, too. order number 66. Yeah, execute order 66. Absolutely. And, and if that, you know, we we all, we have to, I think black people, are, there is no shame in this. And I'm going to tell you this, right? There is no shame into pausing for a few seconds when you're dealing around white folks to make sure that chip, that virus, whatever you want to call it, ain't clicked in. And so if you if this means that you're just a little extra mean to them, a little extra rough to them on, on first, you know, go around when you're meeting them, have at it. It's okay, you know what I'm saying? Because it is better for you to know that you're doing things upon your own will and not because you've been programmed to do it. Better for you do things that you consciously agree to and not just because you've been programmed to. And the second instance is, is you know, I, when when I heard the woman say that, oh, I just went up there and talked to the dude with the with the rifle, with the pistol, you know what I'm saying, burning hot, and he ready to go at it. I kind of thought about white white police officers. I don't know why. I I, I don't know why, because I've seen many incidents of, of comparisons where white guys with guns and the white police officers go there to try to talk them down. And I saw the exact same modus operandi from this white woman. And what does this mean? What does this tell you? You know, one conclusion I think this is logical that you can come to is that that white life matters. That white life matters so much that you have to do whatever you can to stop them from having this justice system come down on their head. And I just put that out there for food for thought. Pass the mic. Appreciate the opportunity. Hey, appreciate that, brother. Appreciate that, brother. Well, we got Kevin C here next. Kevin C, you got the mic. Happy New Year's to you as well, my brother. Uh, hey, Roger. Happy New Year to you there, uh, uh, my good man. Uh, to all the people on the panel, Hot Sauce Tampa and uh, AL, <clears throat> and then all the folks who might come up later, and then, uh, of course, to everybody in the chat. Um, I... I, I came in, Roger. I just came in from some running some errands and doing some stuff. But um, I'm wondering here, because I, I almost feel like, well, I, I hate to say almost feel like, but I, I somewhat suspect that most black people would have done something similar. I just don't know if that, like maybe black men wouldn't have put in so much effort. And 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 interestingly enough, the story is focused on so with the white guy who got stuck in a snowstorm and the and the. And the lady saved them. Understand that the, the her fiance was actually involved too, right? Did you know that? Right? It came out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He brought him in the house because we know. Yeah, so do. I'm like, so why is so so why is all? I mean, and this, this again, this is not about shine or praise and all this other stuff and everything else. But look, if we're gonna if we're gonna make the bit, if we're gonna have, if gonna if we're gonna heap all of this praise, then let's put it on the people who this shine a light on that it was a team effort. You see what I'm saying? That's how that's how you see the agenda. See, that's that like critical that thinking. Like either 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 you highlight everybody or highlight no one, right? Exactly. So that, that's how you got to do business, and I, I don't I, I don't really like that, and, and and I'm not sure why the woman isn't pressing for half her fiance's right. There. This is your fiance, by the way, dude. You're getting ready to marry, all right? A dude who's getting ready to invest everything in you. Okay, so I'm, I'm now starting to get a little bit emotional. Now. See. Because you see, you see the aggravation already starts to starts to populate. <laughs> because that's if we're gonna do that and highlight what she did, then let's highlight what that gentleman did as well, and her fiance and the guy who's getting ready. Like she should have insisted, hey, my fiance would put in just as much effort as I did, if not more. I mean, I, I get it. They're they're kind of going off the video, and she's kind of the only person there. And as they move it around, they kind of clipped it so that way she's the only she's the only wait, one. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Kevin. Let me just interrupt you just to say this. We don't know that the dude ain't sitting on the couch in the background. He could be right there. We don't know that he's not right there. It's hey, a snowstorm. Where else would he be at this point? 
Yeah, exactly. Only- He's right there in the house. So why is it? Why is it? She he not highlighted just as well as she is. It's a team effort, right? Supposedly. Right? <laughs> like, 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 and, she sh- and not only that, she should have insisted that he be highlighted and recognized. If she's going to get shine, he needs to get shine too. Because you know what? You need to highlight the fact that black men are, you know, have, are, are just as concerned about people now. I'm not so sure I would have went to that length and everything else. Because when she went out there and heard the screams, it could have been anybody, right? It could have been a black person, Asian person, could have been anybody. And 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 I understand what, what the what the point is here. Would the, now you have to ask the question: Would that same amount of effort been have, been have applied had it been an older black gentleman, um, or any other you know person of any other group? I, 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 but again, it kind of goes back to the fact that you know people black black, black people have this. I guess the curse of being the mo- the moral group in the United States versus if you want to call it that or being tagged with the moral with this morality thing that this morality chip that somehow in order to uh, get respect from everybody else, we have to go out of our way to, to help all these other groups and, 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 and black people too. But I mean, especially just, Oh, look, look how good of a, of a black person I am. Look how much effort I put right. in trying to, trying to Yo, show we you. Gotta forg- we got to forgive and, 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 and people. It's gonna really gonna be reciprocated. Right. We gotta forgive people after they shoot up our church before they forget before they even ask for forgiveness. Twenty fifteen, man, I am still reeling from that. And I, I, Jimmy, see, that's the thing. Had that happened to somebody in my family, I'd have been the only one in there going, "Oh, I ain't forgiving. I ain't forgiving. I ain't forgiving nothing. This guy needs to go under the jailhouse." Matter of fact, uh, if y'all let me have five minutes with him, I'll handle all this. We ain't even got to go through trial. I'll handle it. But uh, and then the other thing too with the bookkeeper. See now. I understand that she was more concerned about the kids and she knew everybody in the school. Uh, I'm not so sure I would have tried to talk the dude down, but I don't, you know, I like, you know, a man is probably going to handle that in a way that's not going to be as understanding because at that point I'm in danger. I don't know what this guy's going to do. And if I can get the upper hand on him, or at least if I'm the only person that he takes out, then I'm the only person that he takes out. And then, you know, I get to, I get, I save everybody else and I get to die the hero. Right. Cause then everybody be like, Oh, he stopped the shooter. Okay. All right. But so I died a hero they, anyway. But the they thing would is, not, they would not promote your name as a black man. They would not. Well, um, I mean, they at that point they kind of have to. But my, my, but my whole point is that I understand what she was trying to do, and it's, it's good. She's all religious and everything else. It's just, and I'm I am not knocking religion. It's just, you know, I look at it completely different based on how black people got it in the first place, and. And in this situation, it worked out, and it's a lovely story. And shout out to that you know, that bookkeeper for kind of you know being able to tap into that man's emotions and whatever it is he had go, he was going through. But you know, I, I don't know if I'm, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have handled it that way. Uh, but the thing is, is that I, I get that you're trying to say that maybe uh, at the end of this, those guys wouldn't have been because they're white. They kind of their, their lives kind of got looked out for a little bit more than maybe had it been. Had it been somebody else, so uh, I, I just don't. I don't think that black man wouldn't have, wouldn't have, wouldn't have hesitated to kind of help those folks out, regardless of their race. I'm just not so sure we do would have put in as much effort. Like I'm gonna do as much as I can, but if the guy dies on my watch, he dies on my watch, and I'm not gonna feel guilty about it because I at least did. That's something. That's all I'm saying. That's all. I'm, that's all, Kevin. That's all I'm saying, bro. Because we just gotta just check that stuff for ourselves. You know what I'm saying? We gotta check. We have to ask ourselves well, if. Uh, why are we putting up so much energy and effort for this particular person, especially when it comes to white folks? We always have to ask ourselves that question. Yeah. Well, I just want to say something real quick. In both situations, I ain't doing shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't have to. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. And that is, you're not responsible. That is true. You're not responsible for it. Yeah. But but here's the thing though: the second you insert yourself, now you become responsible, and then it just it's just how you know where are you I, look, on the level of what it is you're willing to do. Look, when that man was like, I'm like, yo, where you going with the gun? He was like, I'm going to the cafeteria. I'm like, cool, you know, it's down the hall to the left. But wait a minute, let me get out. The house. Let me get out the. Let me get out to school. That's it. <laughs> well, you know, well, generally, so there's there's been stories where men have actually attacked. So when you had a, when you had an active shooter, you know there are men have actually gone after the shooter. There's been situations where, where like different races of men, it doesn't matter because they're like, look, at that point it's about self preservation. And one dude said, like when they when I, one dude came into that that that, that the LBGT club, um, or the alternative whatever they do over there. But when he came, we went into that because he said, look, I was trying to save my wife. That was his whole focus. He's like, I don't want this dude taking my wife out. He didn't care about nobody else in that club. 
everybody else kind of got, you know, their life was saved by virtue of his actions, but his focus was his wife. And I understand that, you know, having a wife, I understand that. Like somebody that yeah, that's, close different. To that's different. Yeah. But if I'm, but if I'm alone, I ain't doing shit. Yeah. I, I think the lesson here is if you have a, a mass shooter and he happens to be white, just send a black woman in there because she'll do anything. <laughs> anything it takes to make sure he okay. You know what I'm, I'm doing everything to eliminate the threat. You see the difference? That, I'm doing everything I can exactly. to eliminate the threat. Whatever that threat but, but is. She go- uh-huh. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, yeah, she's going to have a very different approach. Her mindset is I'm going to do everything to make sure that threat is okay. <laughs> yeah. Yo, her mindset is going to be very different. You know? uh, but, but let me read this from uh, K. Nada. Uh, thank you very much for the super chat. He says it was her idea due to her programming. She wanted all the credit. Now, this was talking about the uh, the man who was found in the snow. Now, I do want to say this about the man who was found in the snow. Think about it, y'all. She heard the screaming outside. What she probably do, what did she actually do in that situation? She probably told her fiance to go check it out. Fiance, oh, it's just an old white man. And then, of course, at that particular point, well, now bring that dude in the house. You know what I'm saying? You done found the old white man in the snow? Bring him in the house. We got to take care of him. You know, mm. and obviously, she was more enthralled about taking care of that white man. And he proved it by the fact that she was in the news story and he wasn't because nine times out of 10, it's a snowstorm, y'all. He right there. You really need to know where he's gonna be. Man, she, yeah, 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 y'all want to believe. Thank you, Roger is right. So think about this, y'all. Not just a black woman, but you know we focus on black women here. What black woman gonna go out in the snowstorm after she in house is nice and warm, food already in her belly, hot chocolate there on the side. Man, y'all know, y'all know she sent that dude. Oh, go out there and check. I don't know what that noise is. That sound weird. Come on, y'all. Be real with it. Be real with yourself. So what do you think the reason that she was going to highlight him? I just just want to say this, Tampa. I'm still impressed they saw that white motherfucker. All that white snow (laughs) on the ground. I'm I'm impressed. (laughs) So, shit. Hey, just so you guys know, in contrast, there was a young black lady who actually uh, went through the same thing, and she's uh, deceased, by the way. Young black woman did not survive it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of homeless black people that could use that help. Because I mean, if I if some white man is yelling outside my spot, I'm calling the police, and that's about it. They, he is not he or she is not coming in my house. Well, see, I'm I'm realistic, y'all. Had I fell down, and I know it's a, a black woman there who could help me, I'm not even screaming. I'm gonna have to crawl to the next house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I'm realistic. <laughs> I, my life is on the line. I do not have time to do stuff that ain't going to really benefit me at this particular point. I got to crawl to the next house because I know it's a black woman who lives here. So let me just keep on going. To, there's a house with a black man where I may get some help. You know what I'm saying? And um, even even if the dude ain't there, he, she still got to answer to him. It's a chance I'll get help. But I ain't got time to be begging no and, random black woman for no kind of help at, at all. I just ain't got time for it. Hey, let me ask you something, Roger. No. When, when you're out here interacting, and I know we're having these conversations, and I know we're being general, and, and it does apply to quite a bit of women, though. Um, do, you, do you, you know, are you, are you, do you delineate to the extent that you're trying to evaluate the black woman that you're interacting with? You know what I'm talking about? You say, you saying if somebody I'm dealing with or just when I go out yeah. at random talking to people? Random? Well, so if you know that we, you already know the deal, but I mean, say you, you run into like a, just a black woman that you're interacting with, whether it's at a counter, some kind of service, uh, some you know, whatever, um, mm-hmm. some kind of service, or like, like for example, we're having these conversations, right? And I had to go get something done on my knee, right? And there was a young black lady, a female attendant, you know, and you know, I, I had to say it, I hate to say it, man, but it kind of went through my mind a little bit, like how's how how's this going to play out? Uh, but you know, she was professional. And I, I, I try to, you know, I, knowing the information that I know, I try to wait and see how it's going to play out before I, I, you know, you know, you see what I'm getting at here? You see what I'm trying to say? Or, or? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah I, I yeah. see I, I see bad service on a regular basis because I'm a black man. 
I, I, I have an expectation that yeah. service is going to be bad at the end of the day. All Matter right. of fact, there's there's a often that I go to, to pick up stuff. I will okay. go pick up stuff. Okay. And when I pick stuff up, I tell somebody I'm here for such and such. Tell them who I'm here for. Well, you know what I'm saying? Some say, well, I don't really tell them what I'm coming to get, but I tell them who I'm here for. A lot of people say, well, you know, uh, well, can I look at the paperwork? Now, you already calling me stupid just because you asked me to look at the paperwork. Now, I can see oh, if I'm yeah, just, like yeah. pronouncing a name that's difficult or something like that, then yeah. I get it. Or if you're saying, or if you ask me, can I see the paperwork so I can read it myself or something like that? Okay, I get it because you it's just uh, I don't know how to spell that or whatever the case is. But when I simply ask, uh, well, I tell people who I'm here for, and then you need to look at paperwork. Why you need to look at paperwork? And I just told you who I'm here for. Okay, okay. It's just I, I, I try to be objective and see how people are going to respond before I start. Act, you know, I give you what you energy you give me, and if you're if you're civil and professional, then I you get that same energy. You get funky, then you're gonna get funky energy. Now, I'm going to tell you this, bro, man. I'm here in the Philippines, and often we do have foreigners come through. You know, people slide through. Um, my cousin owns a, a bar in a, in one of the little surfing towns, and sometimes she gets foreigners popping through. And I can tell you this, man. When black folks pop through, you know, they always tap me, oh, go talk to them, you know, say hi. Oh, that's you. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It's not really black folks. It's mainly black women, black dudes, you know, and they mainly African. They're cool, but black American women who come through, um, you know, they little group. It, it it is crazy, man. It is crazy how, you know, immediately I just I I put on a guard because I know they're gonna say something stupid. And the two times that I, I'm thinking about it, it actually happened, they came out of their mouth stupid. So. I'm just, I, it, it's sad to say, but, you know, when I'm there, you know, and we all hanging out and I see a black woman, especially an Eidos woman come through, it's a guard that's up. It's an expectation that she's going to be sassy. It's not going to be an expectation of like, hey, sister, how you doing? Hey, blah, blah, blah. How long you been here in the Philippines? Do you like it? You know, I can't help you out. But, you know, none of that, nothing, nothing, nothing vibe, and it's just confrontational attitude sassiness that's what you expect um is that wrong absolutely and i think you know because like you said kevin i should probably wait a little bit Mm -hmm. but it's already happened to me twice i can already tell you i if i see it happen again i'm probably going to be more on the defensive than to be a person that to be a wait back and see but i will say on a rational on a rational standpoint you are correct but in in well, that moment, well, I don't think I'm going to be that way. Well, to some well, extent, I like people, to be people earn their reputation. See, that's, and that's the problem. People earn their reputation. It comes from somewhere. It's not you're not coming from like you know just not a, a place of uh, you know craziness or or or, or 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 you know ignorance. You're 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 being um, you're being analytical and you're understanding. You're trying to operate within what you believe is the operational environment that's out here as it relates to the information that you know. So yeah, you're gonna. I've only had one negative experience where a woman I saw one. <laughs> Her tire was was uh was uh bald, and I was kind of concerned. I'm like, ma'am, you know your tire. She's I, 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 I was like, okay, I'm gone. I was out. She, 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 <laughs> that's not right for me. That's yeah, not, and the only reason that's I said that's because I, I thought I was helping her by letting her know that her tires were bad and and she might have a blowout while she's driving. On all these tires are bad, and I and I didn't understand her financial situation. I was just trying to give her some good safety advice. You know, like you're a military guy. Uh-huh. First, right? Kevin, you Kevin. man, you mansplaining, Kevin. You mansplaining. Kevin, yeah. Kevin, Kevin, she, Kevin. She just lost it. It's like I know my tires. This, that, the third, and you ain't got to be. I was like, okay, I walked away. Well, I was done. Well, let me just say this before you take it, John. Uh, with me, my my attitude is uh, where well, she could die. You know, I, I ain't said I wouldn't try to tell her or whatever. But if I did and, and I got that type of reaction, my thing is she could die and Jesus can tell her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But she'll find out her tie no good one way or the other. She gonna find out. You know, we well, they all going to the Roger, day. I understand. Uh, but safety safety is not just her, it's other people on that road too. How many people is she gonna take out on the when her tires blow out? But anyway. Nah, I get it, but life ain't fair, unfortunately. You know, that's all I can say on that. Life ain't fair, unfortunately. Now uh shout out for the super sticker. Y'all, hit me pronounce his name. What what are we saying here? What's what is the name? Ken Kinshasa. 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 Awesome. Kinshasa. 
Austin. Okay, thank you very much for the super chat. I hope that's being pronounced correctly. Ken Kinshasa. Kinshasa. That's Austin. actually a country in Africa. That's actually, a, I think, a capital city in Africa or close to it. It's similar to the name, by the way. Oh, all right. Well, well salute for, to that name. Appreciate that. Appreciate it. Salute to that name. Okay. And um, dang, I was going to say something. I forgot what it was. But uh, you know what? John, go ahead and take because I forgot what I was going to say. Go ahead, John. <laughs> Good afternoon to the panel. Good afternoon, Kevin, brother. Kevin, see, to your point, you told everyone about a ball tie while she was all stunned out. Stunned, she was dressed up and stunned. And you reminded her she was really broke, so that's why she got mad at you. <laughs> Stop counting her pockets, Kevin. Stop counting these hoes' pockets when they're out and about, okay? You telling her, oh, man, that's a class A. That's not even a real Gucci bag. You had that point out, dog. Come on, man. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, first point I want to make though is, oh, you know what, John, real quick. Matter if I say this real quick, let me let me just say this because I I do believe in being confrontational, but when you're working, you know what I'm saying, you want to be professional. So, like I was saying that when I the the, uh, the times that I do do pickups because every every once in a while I do a pickup, you know, I'm going there to pick up some stuff, right? If I if if I'm talking to you and you're the person behind the counter, you know, regardless of where I'm picking up from, because I told y'all I do stuff at businesses and I do stuff at homes. If I'm coming to do a pickup and you and I tell you who I'm here for, now let's say it's just a basic name like uh John Smith. If I say I'm here for John Smith, you need to see the paper for. You know, people say, you know, what I'm well, can I see the paper for what? Don't you know how to spell John Smith? Do you really need my help? Now, I know y'all may not catch it, but that's somebody saying you're stupid at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Now, how stupid they're calling you is hard. It's different levels to that. Because either they say, I can't read, because I, I don't know what name I just told you. So you could be saying, I can't read. You could be saying, I'm not a professional. You could be saying, I'm making this whole thing up from, from, from the get-go. It's a lot of stuff you could be saying. Just that's by what she's saying, saying Roger. Saying you ain't spoke. Are you? She's saying, 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 nigga. She's saying, like, nigga. Are you sure you supposed to be here? And, like you're a black man, and I need to see you before you take anything. I need to verify you, right? When she's asking for paperwork, she's trying to verify you. Ain't none of us. Exactly. Yeah, she's yeah. Miss, she's trying, you're, not, you're not. You're not trying to get over. You're not trying to run a scam. It's like you're trying to run a scam. You shouldn't be here in this building. I gotta be because I'm black. You see what I'm saying? I gotta be because I'm black. So I know. That's a she's not que- she, she's not a que- she's, she's not question she's not questioning your intelligence though she's questioning they're, they're questioning your character yeah it's char- well, I mean yeah. if you think if, if you think I'm dumb enough to not to know you're questioning me you are questioning my intelligence okay on top I see of I see I see I see what you're saying yeah I see your point I you see what what you make it to you, you yeah, don't even yeah. think I recognize that this is a problem you see what I'm saying well, which she, is why yeah, I, yeah. a lot she's, she's and better a lot than of you. and smarter she thinks she's yeah. better than you smarter. No, she and, just and that's why, shit, right? She just verified, making sure I see a black man come in and ask you for shit. You know, I need to verify that he's really. A, I need to make sure this nigga's supposed to be here. Right? Even, <laughs> even, if, even if John Smith was a janitor, you even asking for the CEO. Even if John Smith was the janitor, she's like, "Who are you? Are you sure you you supposed to be here?" Your papers, niggas. Papers. Where the niggas papers? <laughs> Where are your papers, dude? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and trust me, I, I I don't even trip about this stuff because I know that's that's the what I should expect when it comes to society. But I do like to be professional, but I also like to be confrontational. So when somebody says something to, to, today, unless I'm like pressed for time, I have to be like, why? You know, because <laughs> then then they then they gonna they gonna give me a blank stare because I guess nobody ever asks these folks why. You know what I'm saying? But that's immediately what I go to. Why? What? I say, why? What you mean, why? You asked me to see the documents. Why you need to see them? You know what I'm saying? I ain't never got an actual legitimate answer. But I do ask that because I want them to know, basically, don't ever ask me nothing. You know what I'm saying? If you ever happen to see me again, don't ask me next time either. But I'm trying to get them to stop doing that to people at random because there's people with jobs when they doing pickups, they picking up stuff every day. You know what I'm saying? So uh, just because you're a black man, you don't get to question me, period. Yeah, I don't care what, who you think you are, but you don't get to question me just because I'm black. 
The police don't even do that. And I remind police often that they work for me. And I tell them what their job is. You know what I'm saying? But that's just me. I ain't saying y'all get yourself shot or whatever case it is. You got to be careful with how much stuff you're going to use. And you got to be confident when you use it. Because you, you got to understand any situation can go sideways real quick. So unless you're willing, willing to, unless you're ready to deal with a sideways situation, don't get, don't jump off the porch too quick is all I'm saying. I, I ain't saying right, don't right, learn to jump off the porch. But, you know, jump off when you're ready. I'm about to give you another super chat, man, for the bullet wound tax. Now you talking about you telling the police how to do their job. God damn, right? Slow down, bro. Slow down. I try to I try to get you to come. I try to get you to come out here to Asia, man. Slow that shit down, bro. Slow it down. What the hell? What the fuck? Somebody gotta tell them how to do their job. Yo. Man, that, man, that ain't your responsibility. Your responsibility is get that passport and bring your ass out here and do a show from out here. That's your goddamn no, responsibility, man. Yeah, Roger, that shit, man. Yet, Roger, I mean, Roger, you tripping. What's up with your passport, Roger? Oh, you, you know what? I actually, uh, I went to get the passport, man. I left my birth certificate, man. I was salty oh, about that. Oh, I left the yeah. uh, <laughs> no, it, it, it ain't the end of the world. I'm just rehabbing it rescheduled. That's all. I'm just having to reschedule. Okay, all right. So all right, I'm still right. about to get it. Yeah. Okay, let, let, but, let, uh, me just, but, let me just say this for yeah, those who actually... Who those who oh, want to actually John. get their passports, uh, won't you just come to our website, worldpassportpros.com. We'll show you how to get your website and uh, travel abroad. I, I want to comment on those two links that I saw, which to me were disgusting. And it hey, was Q, so Yo, John was up first, bro, man. I, I mean, We kind of got off track a little bit, but have, John was have, up next. Have, man. Have, you know what? I have held the privilege, though. I have held the privilege. Okay. Oh my bad! If you're born in '62, yeah. if you're born in '62 you, or early, you do have elder privilege. So I didn't know that fit you, Q. But hey, if you got it, you got it. Thanks for letting me know, brother. Know, go ahead. But John, but John could go. I'm sorry. Go ahead, John. Go ahead, John. Yeah, and my apologies, John. Because we did cut you off. We did cut you off. My apologies. <laughs> Understood. So the point I was the point I was going to make. Point one was that um, <clears throat> nine times out of ten. The issue we're talking about women helping helping other white men, or that's kind of normal. What I think is what I think I've seen is that when for black men, black men help anybody. Black women, white men, white women, white kids. Not this one. Well, I'm just saying on average, if you if you look at who's going to help the most, it's going to be black men that 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 really get out there and help somebody. True. That's what I've noticed. That's what I've noticed. So in the, according to these, what I've been seeing in these stories that that uh, Roger put out is that black women are selective who they help, but it's never really on the majority. It's never really us on yeah. the majority, and that's what I've noticed is like is that black women are willing to help white men, but black men are the most helpful. And I remember we, <clears throat> in the video that went out a few months ago, it was talking about the white lady was telling her kids, "If you ever in trouble, go up to a black man." And as I watch as I watch society move, that's what I see. Black men are the most helpful. That shit is not a compliment. I, well, that I, well, shit is not a it may hold on, hold on. It may not be a compliment. I'm just saying what it is. I didn't say it was a compliment. I'm just saying what it is. That's all I was saying. I was just making note. I was just making that point made. Second yeah, thing I noticed here. Go ahead. No, I, I like I said before, black people want to be free. You gotta practice racism. Until then, we're gonna be on this bullshit. Well, the only the only the only why the only reason why I mentioned though because in that video of the lady who sent her, her uh who who heard a white man out there in the snow is because they didn't even mention the man at all. And we know that, that woman didn't carry that man up them up them stairs into the apartment. And that's the only reason why I mentioned it. You know, is it show how how in the in the overall scheme of things, how black men are sacrificed in a lot of these situations? But that was one thing I one point I noticed. Second thing I noticed is when someone made the someone made the comment about being religious and helping people, and I can't remember who said it. But the thing I the thing I wanted to point out in that is that when we use religion as far as that we are the most forgiving, I think most people misunderstand. I think. How can I say this? I think a lot of people misunderstand the faith. 
It's not it's not that we are the most forgiving. Well, we okay, let me say it again. We can be the most forgiving. But I think the problem that we mess up as black people is we think forgiving means that justice shouldn't be carried out. I can forgive, but justice still have to go forward. And so when we talk about the law, if someone does something wrong, for example, if that boy would if that boy he didn't shoot anyone at that school, okay. Forgiving is up to the individual. I get that. If you want to forgive, you can't. I have no problem with you forgiving. But I'm not going to let you forgive. You can forgive, but what, I, what I'm not like, what I'm not going to let you do is, is not let justice be carried out. We need to learn the difference of there. We can forgive, but it doesn't save you from your justice. And I'm done. Well, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I can forgive you right while you serving your time. You know, and that's just, <laughs> that's real. I, I, um, I don't know. We have to forgive. I, I'm I'm against that. Well, well I'm just saying for well, those who well, talk those, about. Those I, I was talking about for those who who talk about who use faith as a reason yeah. to forgive. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah I, nobody I, else I forgives. No, no one else forgives. No one is. For, no one else is forgiven anything. That you know. Look at what happened to uh, the, those folks in, uh, in in Germany in the, uh, the Third Reich, where they you know slaughtered six million plus of them. They're still punishing them to this day. There's no forgiveness. To this day, just last week, they yeah, had a ninety-seven year old secretary. She wasn't even involved. She just was They got her. She yeah, was I was just going to mention that. You don't play that game. Well, so no, I, I, I'm, I'm with everybody else. No forgiveness. None. What, 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 what as, as Christians, we, we have to be willing to forgive, but forgiving, I don't know if, if that means you don't punish a person too, though. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I haven't it made does, that connection it does, yet. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I haven't made that connection at all where it says you got to forgive, therefore you don't punish. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's actually so, part that, of it. That, 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 it. that can be now that can that can fall into grace, but grace ain't guaranteed. I mean, that's just like I said. That's what is guaranteed is punishment. Yeah, but let me read this super chat and let's give it to uh, let's give the mic to Q. Uh, can Kinshasa Austin? Thank you very much for the super chat. Said heard the name Ken at the beginning. Just wanted to confirm that it was not me. <laughs> And happy new year to the panel of chat. <laughs> well, happy new year to you it. as well, brother. Happy new year well, I don't, I don't to you as well. And, and, and we wouldn't have your name out here looking bad, brother. So so we talking about you. We're gonna talk good about you. Okay, we ain't gonna have you out here looking bad. And that's for sure. <laughs> so go ahead, Q. How you doing, brother? I'm good. Thank you. Uh, uh, Tapu, the brothers on the panel, let you know my birthday is next month, or we call it the Earth Day. I'm not going to tell you how old I am. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I accept presents and Visa and MasterCard, so feel free, you know. Um, you know, I saw, I saw both the clips, and, and both these sisters disgust me, because it's just a show for them to, to pretend like they, they are altruistic. And, and, and sisters have a habit of doing this. Let me tell you something. You just, everybody needs to have a copy of this book called Daughters of the Trade. The reason why these black women are in HR, they're at the supermarket cash registers, they're at the DMV, they, they, they have all these positions at the, what is it, the TSA and the airports, is because they have a long history with the white man. The white man loves them in two ways. Number one, as the mammies, and number two, as a exotic sexual object. And therefore, he keeps them gainfully employed in these, uh, these, these pit bull positions. And it's disgusting and embarrassing to the black man that these sisters are world renowned for their poor customer service and poor attitude. I, I watched a video of this young Japanese woman, this woman who pulls people, tourists, on this type of horse cart, but she's the, the horse. She pulls them and gives them a tour of the city. Her, her demeanor, and you can see it, most of the Japanese people are so pleasant. Now, try to have a sister do a job like that and see if she has an attitude like that as well. And they also, they also practice the, the, to love themselves in their own race. When the American asks, if I came to move here, would I be able to get a job like this? She goes, not with my company, but you could probably start your own, you know. But that's, that, I digress. That's not the point I wanted to make. So there's this history between white men and, and, and black women to where white men 
know that they have poor customer service. I, I was at a store and this was, oh yes, there it is. The Daughters of the Trade. They, thank you. Um, I was I was at a watch store with me and my girlfriend and I, I, the sister was showing me watches and I was asking every question that could work underwater. Apparently on my third question, she literally went ballistic and started yelling at me in the in, 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 like at the top of her lungs in the store. And she was like, didn't I tell you that, yes, it works underwater? And I was I couldn't say anything. I was so shocked that someone would do this. Her white manager looked at her and pulled her in the back. And next thing I know, she walks out and she sits down and apologizes to me. Well, I was like, well, apology is not good enough to the manager. She needs to be fired. What's your, what's your home office uh, phone number and address? The, the, the attitude that they, they display is just unforgivable. And I'm going to say this also. We just had the New Year's here in Las Vegas. Every time sisters come, there's always a problem. I had reported this not too long ago that they assaulted this. They, they come in these groups. I guess is their little hot summer girl thing or whatever. But even in the winter, they're here, and they assaulted this this young white girl for no reason. She came up asking a question. I guess they got into a little thing, and the, and the sister put her hands on the white girl. I watched the whole thing and I was just in shock. It has gotten so bad to the point now, if you go to these Vegas clubs, you will rarely see sisters. They, they have weeded out black women. They know their reputation. When I see them come to these clubs, the first thing they do is they get into their little packs, right? They don't know how to socialize. They really don't. They don't know how to talk to people and be polite. They get into their little packs, and what they do is they talk about everybody in the club. They never mingle. They never do anything that that that's going to communicate that hey listen, um, come ask me to dance. They have a mean mug on their their face, and they just end up leaving the club, you know. So um, nobody approaches them because they, they have they, you know you know their reputation. So what the clubs have started to do, unless you look like a high value black woman and you're by yourself or at most with one other. Um, you're, you're not going to get in if you're a group of black women. It, it just doesn't matter. They know how to weed them out. And I'm talking about most of the clubs do this. And you, you haven't heard this from me. All right. And I noticed it. So the, the, it, it's just an embarrassment that our women act in this way. And the same with this woman who I think he's king now, but he was Prince Charles, got her on her knees and crawled to him where the other white women were just standing up on looking and, and this, this sister just went nuts as if she was in the presence of almighty Jesus himself. So they have a long history with this white man and, and they know how to treat these men and they know how to treat us when they encounter us. And usually it's with, uh, low respect, poor customer service, try, and, they, and they actively, I want to be clear on this, they actively provoke an argument or a confrontation. I've seen it over and over again. And I'll just land my plane there. All right. Uh, appreciate that, brother. And I want to say shout out to Kevin C. And uh, y'all y'all should get the, the book Daughters of the Trade, which I did highlight that comment when he made that. That should be something that everyone should highlight. I mean, everyone should think about reading because it's going to give you really good information. And uh, shout out to Kevin C. He says, uh, shout out to the panel and the folks in the chat, wishing all of the Roger Report listeners a prosperous and very financially rewarding year in 2023. And I definitely had the same thing in mind. I wish y'all much success. I hope that this is this will be the year that you've made more money than you've ever made in your life. That's what I hope is happening for you in 2023. Uh, you know, I call it the Jordan year because I'm a Jordan fan. Y'all, y'all know that. Y'all know that already. So I expect greatness and excellence to happen this year and to give me better stuff to build on in 2024. But I, oh, I no, do got to say that. I'm sorry, Roger. Oh, go I got to start, go start the year out right. I'm going to give you a donation here uh, to the Super Chat. Oh, well, appreciate it, brother. Definitely appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? And thank you for getting my year started off right. <laughs> appreciate that. Yeah. And uh, the new black media. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, y'all, cause cause trust me, in the in the next ten years or so, we we'll, I do believe we can be just as mainstream as mainstream media, and that's and they don't know what to do with us, but I think we can get there at the end of the day, y'all. Um, but but the 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 reason this type of discussion is important because again, black men need to see what black women are doing, and black women need to see that some of us see you doing this type of stuff. These are two random women that I'm sure don't know each other. Probably don't live in the same cities at all. Don't have none of the same interests or whatever the case is uh, as far as any, well, anything that they would know as far as about themselves. They probably have no connection whatsoever. And in extreme situations, what they going to do? Well, if he white, we got to save him. Period. And And if you... Both of these women were very passionate about how these white men need to be saved. When do y'all see them disimpassioned about black children? Even their own kids. Especially oh, excuse me, especially their sons. I don't really be seeing Roger. them with this type of passion. <laughs> Roger. Go ahead, brother. Roger, if there was only yes, so sir. much breast milk, if there was only so much breast milk, we know who them mammies would feed. Well, based on what I'm hearing nowadays, uh, uh, it's plenty of breast milk because because the 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 women giving their black children some other than breast milk. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing nowadays. They giving their kids uh, uh what what you call that? Similac? Is that what it is? Similac. Yo. Know, yeah. They giving them everything but breast milk. Um, uh, half the time nowadays, you know. Um, well, I just shout out to Perfect I, Women Podcast, but he gave me a lot of information on how. Black women using everything but a breast to feed their own child. Go, go ahead, yeah. ourselves. No, I just, I just want to say, uh, shout out to black men for a shortage of um, black sperm. You know, keep it short. You know what I mean? Like, do not let these women have kids because, like, like uh, Perfect Thomas said, you know what I mean? Like, they're they are not they are not taking care of their children the right way, the right way. Hashtag make them earn your sperm. Yeah, only make 10% them, of black them earn. Wow, I like that. The I like that. Make, it, like make them earn that, that sperm. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but, um, hey. yeah, black men are real smart about guarding yeah. their genetic material. And especially, that's, not, that's the majority of black men. Not that yeah, small majority. The small few. I got to create a t shirt. Make them earn your sperm. I got to create a t shirt. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Y'all quite, y'all, y'all quite welcome. Y'all quite welcome. Hashtag make a whoa, 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 pause, please. We're, please also give credit to niggas in the wilderness because we've been saying that for years. Shout out to niggas <laughs> in the wilderness. Shout out to the NIW, man. The NIW. The NIW, but they, they, their passport control is tighter than China, boy. They, they ain't trying to let no <laughs> black woman come over there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm Kevin. I'm sorry. Kevin, I didn't mean to uh, um, talk over you. I'm sorry. No, no, that's good. I was just, I was just waiting for a break. That, that's fine. I was just kind of uh, making some comments here. Hey, you know, uh, it's very interesting because when I talk to other people on other channels, I let them know that there are black men who have not been, who have left the United States and haven't been back in like a, a decade or more. And, uh, yeah, I, you know, I haven't been like hospital. He's one of them. I didn't, I didn't bring up the fact that you you almost what twenty years overseas? Uh, twenty. Uh, uh, what is it? Oh eight. I, I left my oh oh seven oh seven. I've been abroad yeah. since oh seven. Yeah. So, so yeah, pretty, pretty much, yeah. pretty much half of my life, half of my life that mm-hmm. lived in the U.S. and the other half of my because I'm forty now. I'm, I'm I just turned forty four and I left when I was twenty four. So I almost been outside of the U.S. As long as I've lived in the U.S., almost there you go, yeah. And 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 understand that there are people who are really upset about that because they know that the better and the best black men are the ones who are actually capable of doing that and leaving. So I think it's like sixty plus. It's like sixty four percent of passport holders are like a hundred thousand dollars or more. They, that's their annual salary. Like sixty percent, and then uh, yeah. and then another. And then I think it's like over almost seventy percent have bachelor's degrees or higher. They have at least a bachelor's degree. So people who are traveling actually have something going for them. And that's all races of people, by the way. But black men are included in that. You know, oh, these I, are not nugs. These are not, these are not, this is not Pookie and Ray Ray or the, or the, or the chaotic gentlemen who are running around, or the chaotic dudes running all, you know, running amok in, in the hood. 
These are men who are very capable, very competent, very responsible, very productive. And, you know, shoot, you think, you know, like women should be actually trying to figure out a way to get you back versus, you know, you see my Kevin point? Like, yeah, it, it, it doesn't help for your better and, uh, and best black men to be leaving. But here's the other thing, too, is that like, so, for example, I already, you know, people kind of get on me when they find out, oh, well, Kevin, you don't care. Yeah. Like, he, it's like, Roger, so if you look at the Super Chat, you'll notice that it, it's like five bucks today, right? See, so I go back mm -hmm. and forth to the United States. And people go, well, Kevin, you overseas. You don't even count like, man, I, I I go back and forth on a regular to the United States. So I need to care about what the hell is going on and know what's, what, 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 what's happening. And I got a vested interest in actually what's happening in my own damn country where I was born. And understand that I've, you know, you know, I know, you know, uh, Hot Sauce is out, you know, uh, he's kind of coming up where he's, you know, kind of left as a young age or whatever, whatever. But I spent the first 30 years, of, like the first a good three or four days. Well, yeah, first 30 years working and living in the United States, traveling intermittent in other countries overseas, which is kind of how I got my overseas experience. But people still have the nerve to judge me about that. I'm married. Produce kids, raise my kids, did all the stuff I'm supposed to do. And that man, because I and, and literally upset that I'm I'm in another country. What well, well, like, Kevin what are you talking Kevin, to, man? Kevin, I have a best friend who we just had some heat last night because he told me I was traveling to Columbia for hookers. But but you know, let me let me let me you just hit on a good point, Kevin. And I forgot about this. So, gentlemen, I put I wrote an article that's on my website. Go I put the link in the description box and also backstage that black women were the first to start the passport movement with uh things like um how Stella got a groove back, um, and yeah. you know, daughters, yeah. daughters of the trade and the pursuit of happiness. So I document Man, those Eddie, work, how they yeah, Eddie Murphy. go overseas to actually uh, get sex from Jamaican men. Yeah, Eddie Murphy did a joke about that. You know what I'm saying? Talking about going on the beach. I forgot what his name was, Daryl or some shit like that. Yeah, he made he a did. fucking like a skit on that shit. You know? Yeah, yeah. It was it was a funny skit where he was like talking about how they walk by with their accent and and holding their their, their you know their private parts, swinging it around. To women. <laughs> so so my question would be, where is this? I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I was gonna say what. Well, see, at at the end of the day, that that's this is why I do believe black men are checking out because black women are displaying what these same two black women did in this video. And, and and see, people don't put this together. I think the normal black women act like these two women. These yeah. were quote unquote yeah. extreme circumstances. Yeah. Well, you could yeah. definitely say that the the shooting was a more of an extreme circumstance. Uh, it when it happened every year, so that I'm not gonna even say that that's an extreme circumstance. Um, uh, a guy, even though they found a guy who's mentally not there, you know what I'm saying, past an 11 year old, uh, this, that can happen to anybody in their regular, normal, everyday life. That's not really that extreme at the end of the day. People get locked out of places and things like that. It's not an extreme situation. Yeah, but she just she make it. She, she emphasized the word. I have a white man. You know. Yeah, yeah, because because that that part mattered the most. You know what I'm saying? She was showing that you know, in her mindset, the white supremacy is deep, and anything that will ingratiate me to white people, I gotta jump on it. At the end of the day, and when her husband, well, my, I'm about her supposed fiance was left out, she had no issue with that. You know what I'm saying? She wasn't standing next to him to tell whatever she had to tell, because she could have just did that. You know, um, do y'all really think she had a problem? That let's say they taped it and then they cut the fiance out the taping. Y'all really think she got a problem with that? You know? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm upset about that. that. That's a problem for me because she should be highlighting the the, the dude, her, the dude that she's getting ready to marry. I mean, she's lucky she get married, but she should be highlighting that dude and praising him. And be like, hey, he needs to be sitting here right there next to me. You know, I just so so we're traveling, right? And I just I just met a couple and uh, from another country, and you know what? That woman was sitting there bigging up her husband right in front of me. Just Kevin, giving him praise. Kevin, white people, white women do that. They often do that. They talk about the prestige, their their husband's occupation, what he's done lately. They do that. Yeah, she bragged on him. He's a security manager. I said, Oh, your wife likes that. And you know, they kind of laughed or whatever. But I mean, it wasn't a white couple, it was a couple from another from another from South America. But still, it was it was a, it was just kind of interesting. So when we have these conversations, I kind of uh, templated against some of the stuff that happens in real life. But not, let me ask you this, though, Roger. Now, you said that when, when she announced that 
it was a white man. I got this old white man, and yeah, he, you know, he needs help, whatever, whatever. Do you think she, she threw that in there because if it's a white person, then society places more emphasis on that person's life, and she she could get help? You think that was? No, possible? I think she just. I think she said it because that's how she really felt. If it was a man, it's not that big a deal because he black, but it's a white man, so therefore y'all should be accepting this as a big deal. Her issue yeah, was the fact yeah. that they didn't take it as a big enough deal because I just told y'all it was a white man. I didn't yeah, say man. it was one of these niggas out here, y'all. I got you. Yeah. See, yeah, that's what I believe was going on. This ain't no nigga. This is a white man. What? Why is y'all telling me I got to wait? I ain't trying to wait. I told y'all I got this white man here. He's supposed to be at the top of the food chain. Get on over here and get him some help because that's what y'all supposed to do. But let, let me read these super chats real quick. Don't y'all know that white man is priority? <laughs> well, uh, the way she said it, it, it looked like she was confused on how he wasn't taking priority. <laughs> you know, but I I understand y'all. See, I'm looking at the whole scenario. It's a snowstorm. So maybe it was a little bit of extra time it was gonna need to do to get over there because it's a snowstorm going on. Now had this happened in the summertime, yeah, it'll probably be real quick. But when a snowstorm is going on, they gotta change up the rules a little bit. And uh shout out to Wizard Kelly for the super chat. He says, uh, you're supporting yourself when you when you super chat. As a black man, thank you for that, Wizard Kelly. I that that's some that's wisdom right there, y'all. That is wisdom right there. Cause uh, if y'all want me to speak for y'all at a large level, cause I'm gonna say what needs to be said. I tell y'all though, I got it. I got to get it to where my mic is the big mic though. I got to get it to where my mic is the big mic. That means I gotta have a su subscriber so people pay enough attention. Uh, people gotta super chat me. I gotta, you know, be able to produce certain things so other people. We'll take this stuff seriously on a larger scale. And yeah, it's my responsibility to represent y'all well. It's y'all responsibility to help me get where I need to be so I can represent y'all as best I can. Okay, so we in this together at the end of the day. And shout out to Q who says, Happy New Year, Roger. Keep up the good work in 2023. And I definitely plan to do that. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you very much. And shout out to Mr. Shug, to you who said, Make them earn your sperm. ALS 2023. <laughs> And and, and I, I, you know what, y'all? We definitely need to make that uh, a, a saying that just goes all the way around to even these young folks hear it because, uh, you know, especially the 18, 19 year olds. Yeah, they they need to hear that stuff so so they'll think twice and, and go ahead and get them condoms because that's what you know. When, when is somebody going to have sex without using condoms the most when you're young? So we definitely need to. You know, spread that around. So I do hope y'all do spread some of this information around. I said I'm gonna make sure I start saying that more like I used to, but y'all, this stuff ain't just to be heard, it's for you to be able to go out. You will see it just like Kevin was talking about how he sees some of the stuff in action, but it's about spreading the message at the end of the day. If if we don't change the culture, we can't complain about it not being changed. I'm here to change the culture, you know what I'm saying? But I can't do that by myself. I need y'all to to do a little something, something here and there. Wherever you happen to be, but let me turn the phone so, over to Wizard Kelly since he then came um, back can, up. Can I just say something really quick? So uh, I'll give earn the sperm to Al, but for the niggas in the wilderness, you only go raw if you use your passport. <laughs> oh, 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 oh God! Stop it! Stop, stop this! No, no shame, man. No, 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 man. We want, we want them to stay healthy and we want them to be protected. They must earn that sperm hashtag. They must become wise. You Come only, on, you man. only go raw. You only go raw, broad. That's that's it. Look at, it, look at. It. <laughs> listen, listen. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that one. I don't know if I agree with that one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh. Yeah, I, I think sometimes when we when we when we go too deep into uh, speculating on uh, what the, the woman was thinking, sometimes like um, we uh, lose out on some of the more like uh, like uh, demonstrable elements of uh, like uh, the situation. And in this case, the media, like uh, I think like uh, we've under kind of emphasized the way in which the media covered uh, the story. So whenever incidents like this happen where a black person goes out and actually does something like this, uh, one, one of the, the things I heard when I was watching this, I went over to my parents' house uh, on the other side of town on the weekend. And um, what was said was um, the, the, the news anchor said that like uh, stories like this show that um, like uh, the race divide really isn't there. 
Um, we need to look past the, the race divide. Um, but um, w- when she said that initially, I thought it was like, well, uh, initially the first thing that came to mind was like, black people don't hate anyone. Uh, the race issue isn't a divide. It's a unilateral hatred for black people. Uh, there's no such thing as a black supremacist. But also uh, the point in saying something like that in reference to this particular story is to show that um, um, black people acting in subordination to white people or going out of their way, um, maybe not uh, subordination, but in service to white people is um, like uh, this is peace. So when we go out and we do extraordinary things like this in order to save uh, a white person from uh, like uh, from uh, like uh, uh, dying in the cold or whatever, right? That because we're acting in service to, to white people, this is a good thing. So it was obvious, even from by the news anchors, uh, like uh, own admission, like uh, like it was more subtle, but like there was a racial implication to this story, and the racial implication was black people, specifically black women, should be in service to white men. Uh, Wizard Kelly, do you remember it was years ago that this uh, there was the protest going on, like the Black Lives Matter protest? A young boy snuck outside the house to attend the protest. His mother ran out there and beat him in public, and she was given Mother of the Year. Do you remember that the the award? I, I yeah, remember that, was, that, that happening. I don't that, remember that. Ooh. That's a that's a really good <laughs> reference because yeah that's the exact same thing that's happening in this case too where they're um they're um uh, um uh, yeah w- where they're going out of their way to overly promote the woman and make her uh, a hero because yeah like uh, you were saying she was acting in service to to the to, to white people sorry go ahead all right well let, let me get these super chats in real quick shout out to my main man side in the month who says you support yourself when you support Roger. Thank you, Stylin' the Mom, for saying that. I definitely appreciate that. I'm 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 very humbled by that. But I I can I can agree with you. Yes, let me be your voice, y'all, because somebody got to be the voice. So let me be one of the voices, because it, it takes more than one person at the end of the day. It takes more than one. But I want to be one of the ones. So thank you very much for that, Stylin' the Mom. I definitely appreciate it. And shout out to Mister Shit to you. <laughs> Mister Shit to you says hashtag <laughs> What's a washing machine? Make lip bone jewelry great again. <laughs> Amen. So you know Ain't the interesting thing about this is that um, so I, I, I would go out of my way to support black people, black men and women more than I would do anybody else, only be, just because you're black, right? And then like say this, say this is a woman that's stuck in a, in a, in a snowstorm. Now you're dealing with this, and you're a black man. See, you, see how all stuff you got to think about. Like, okay, now. How's this gonna play out? What is this gonna look like? It's not like oh, I'm just helping out another human being. It's like how 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 can I get in trouble if I help this woman out and she's white, she's up in my apartment, and I'm trying to save her life? How am I gonna get screwed out of this? Somehow, see that's that's what we have to think about. What if this plays out incorrectly? Well, you and I wind care. up you know, in trouble somehow. Kevin, I want to well, no, I, Kevin, I have to I have to disagree on that really quickly. You don't need to think about it. You just leave her ass out there. <laughs> well, it's already been established that you know we're generally a pretty good group of people who are. You know, I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to, you know, just, put myself just, in a situation. Just, I, I don't want to be in a situation where I, I, I hate more dilemmas like that. By the way, no, but see, this is the, this is the problem. This is bottom line. This is the problem with Black America. Black America refuses to practice discrimination, refuses to practice yeah, supremacy. Yeah. So we're always going to be in this situation. If you start practicing supremacy, start discriminating, start you know working with our, with others to understand that the world is and everybody's our enemy, life is going to be better. But we yeah, yeah. Just- hey, understand. This is not just a problem with the women. I've I've talked to some black men like they put giving me pushback. I was like, we need to be building. You know, uh, we need to be you know built having black businesses, black finances, black empowerment, and be hiring black people and black and I'm um, you know black men, uh, uh, black people only. And some dude was like, but 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 Kevin, we, you shouldn't be thinking that way. I'm like, everybody else is doing exactly that. What are you talking about? Right. Are you telling everybody that to the Asians? That. Are you telling that to the Hispanics? We are, are you never, telling that to white people? Because everybody else is hiring their own folks, and not only that, they're building their own stuff, and they ain't giving us none of it. So why would you sit black. here and fight me we'll on that? We'll never be able to do that when we have agents provocateurs as our partners. They're out for mm-hmm. our destruction. You try to build a business, this black woman will tear it down and find a way to do it. I wanted to ask um, Hot Sauce a question because I, I haven't gotten to China yet, but how do the Chinese women act 
with their husbands. Well, I mean, there, there's some for the most part, but I, like outside of outside of Shanghai, Shanghai is just like I would say. I don't I don't know what uh, Tampa say, but our Asian houses say they more or less the same. But if you go to southern China, you would be good. And to your, to your other point, where you say that the saboteur. Well, Mao Zedong taught you how to deal with saboteurs, and I'll leave it there. Because if you take a look, I want you to just quickly take a look. Brothers, go to your local, because when I went back to New York, I, I had to go to New York for a short bit, and I said, the first thing I want, I miss, is Chinese food. Go to your Chinese restaurant, and damn if you don't see the woman working and the husband there, too. The husband and woman are working together. You'll never see that in a black business. It's shit here. It's shit in China. It's much better back home. It's shit here. Well, well let, let me say this, y'all, and I'm going to bring the show to a close. Now, I do agree with you, hot sauce. We should discriminate more. I, you Earlier, you said racism. I wouldn't say racism because to me, racism is doing is being dirty. You cheating other people. But yeah, ain't nothing wrong with a little discrimination. Ain't Everybody wrong with do. Ain't you nothing know? wrong with the cheating. Well, as long as you're not cheating your own, fuck them. Cheat them too. Why not? Kill Morgan in the flesh. He learned from his enemies. <laughs> he went to war. He went to harm, but he learned from his enemies. <laughs> Yeah, he he ran that all the way, which which I'm fine with at the end of the day because he's he's still a black man, so I'm a, I'm a roll with him too. Uh, but y'all, th this is the thing: we need to be able to articulate to women what we see, because a lot of them act like we can't see this type of stuff. And I know some of y'all don't use the term white supremacy because you're just not used to saying a black person can be a white supremacist. But you, at some point in time, you have to accept the white supremacy is simply an ideology. That anybody can believe in and anybody can participate with. And in these particular situations, yes, this is with some white supremacy because even though it's shown as they're just helping people, at the end of the day, when you're willing to do this for everybody but your men, because it's because what's hard to do is find stories where black women are doing this type of stuff for black men. That's the stories that are hard to find. You can find these type of stories all day long. When they're helping somebody other than a black man, but Roger, seeing them when they're helping Roger, black men ain't so Roger, easy to find. Roger, who 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 started the Innocence Projects, which gets black men free out of jail? White people, not black women. I mean, you can name a multitude of things <laughs> that that they didn't start. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> At the end of the day, so and I'm not even saying that black women have to start these organizations because y'all are the women. But you should at least be supporting the men when they when they uh, create an organization, and that's what we really don't get. Now, when 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 the uh, when the Black Lives Matter thing was pushed, and it was said that it was about three black women trying to create something to do all this stuff, people jumped right in line. Now I understand it was it was media pushing the thing, and it was a bunch of non-black people who was getting involved. But when it comes to black people. The, the the women was with it all day long because three women was supposed to be in charge of it. And then the men was with it all day long because they was trusting three black women to do something that's going to help black men. Which, uh, again, even to myself, it sounds like a good idea. Now, maybe that was a little mistrust with me because I wanted to go check the website out first before I gave the money. <laughs> but I, I'm going to think that's probably because it was three black women. You know what I'm saying? Now, I, I, I know the, uh, the the women who did it was supposed to be like LGBT or whatever the case is. I, I didn't even consider that part. It was three black women. So the fact that it was three black women is probably what made me saying, let me read what's on their website before I give them this money. Because I was just about to give my first donation. And my mindset was, you know, I give them some uh, a donation every... And, you know, here and there, I give them some donations because I want to help the cause if it's going to be about helping black people. And then I got on that website and found out it's going to help you as long as you ain't a straight black man. You know what I'm saying? So y'all got nothing to do with me. Therefore, I got nothing to do with y'all. And um, it is what it is on that one. So I'm going to get ready to get up out of here, y'all. Uh, shout out to Silent Lamont, who says, <clears throat> excuse me, Silent Lamont, thank you very much for the for the super super chat. He says, when you support Roger, you support Thirsty Thursdays. 
<laughs> well, you know what? Support Thirsty Thursdays, and that's what I'm gonna say to that. Support Thirsty Thursday. And I, and for those who are new, if you do not know, uh, we do this 9 a.m. Central Time, 9 a.m. Central Time, y'all. So be here or be square. And shout out to the replay gang. I definitely appreciate y'all as well. And I'm trying to get to all the comments. I'm trying to put time aside on a regular basis so I can make sure I respond to all the comments. No matter how old they are, I'm going to try to get to every single comment that people are, are dropping. So I do appreciate y'all big time. Love y'all. I see y'all in the morning. Lonely of the habitual last steppers. I'm Roger. I'm right. And I'm out. Yay, yay.